and Michael Remus. On the ice tonight, game one of 82. And you might see a little bit of a different background today. That is because we are live in the Bull Bud King Club getting ready for tonight's home opener here at Canada Life Center. Going to have a great show today. We will have Sarah Orleski jump on with us live here at Canada Life Center in about 20 minutes or so. Sarah's going to break down the upcoming year, get her thoughts on uh, her new role, talk a little bit about the post-game show that she'll be anchoring for the Winnipeg Jets as well as a bunch of the new content and some important things for fans to know about tonight's game, including the new app that the team has launched and how you can use that, particularly for season ticket and package holders, how to utilize discounts and uh, everything else around it. And uh, I got to tell you, a major buzz downtown right now. It was great seeing the uh, the morning skate. Lots of energy. Very different morning skate, I have to say, than um uh, maybe what we've been used to. I'm not sure whether that's because it's the first game or it's just a different way that Rick Bonus was doing things. But he was very involved this morning. Uh, it was a longer morning skate than we've normally seen before. And um, on a couple of occasions, brought the entire team together at the center ice to uh, continue to impart the new plan for the Winnipeg Jets. And of course, the visitors tonight have been busy. It's the New York Rangers. Captain Jacob Truba coming back to the peg. The Rangers lit up the Minnesota Wild last night to the tune of 7-3. They're now 2-0 and on the season. However, they are playing the second of back-to-back -back nights, and this is the Rangers' third game of the season already, and their third game in four nights. So we'll be all over it. Ken Weave a little bit later on. We'll also get ready for the weekend in the National Football League in that big Chiefs-Bills game with Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. And uh, looking forward to that. And, of course, it's Friday. Even though we are here on location, the CTO will be able to uh, drop the marbles. And we'll do that at the uh, end of the program in and around 3 p.m. Welcome to everybody watching us live on YouTube right now. Thanks so much for being with us. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and join us daily here on Winnipeg Sports Talk daily, Monday to Friday, 1 p.m. And wherever you get your favorite audio podcast, pop in Winnipeg Sports Talk, hit that subscribe button. You'll get the latest content in and around 3.30 Monday to Friday, right after we finish the live stream on YouTube. All right, before we bring Remo in and get this party started do have to thank all the sponsors that make this show happen each and every day, including our friends at Cool Bet Canada. By the way, Lock Shop Best Bets show just dropped earlier. Also from here, check out my Twitter, Dustin Nielsen's Twitter, or wherever you get podcasts, search Lock Shop. Went 4-0 last week, 13-7 and on the year against the spread, hoping to keep that rolling this week. Um, but in addition to Cool Bet, of course, Princess Auto and Not Auto Corp, such great sponsors of ours, as well as Consolidated Supply, Vita Health Fresh Market, Wallace & Wallace, Royal Sports, F Apparel, Culligan Water, Canadian Club Whiskey, Breezy Bend, and of course the Nick and Nicky DQ Group, and our friends at Winnipeg's favorite local brewery, Little Brown Jug. All right, Sarah Orleski in a few minutes. We are going to hear a couple of clips from Rick Bonus, who spoke after the uh, morning skate today before tonight's home opener for his Winnipeg Jets. But let's get Remo in here to uh, get this going. Uh, Remo, what's up? Uh, we made it happen. We are here live at the rink. You can feel the buzz, the calm before the storm, if you will. How are you? Yeah, we've yeah, been uh, uh, hard at work here doing this. Uh, this is pretty wild being here at Canada Life Center. 
uh, the arena behind us. Uh, this is awesome. So fired up for game one. I've been watching so much hockey over the last couple of days, but you can't help but have FOMO because every other team has played. The Rangers have played. This is their third game. What's going on here? And we had to wait. But, hey, it's Friday. Uh, people are excited. Uh, and I'm definitely uh, pumped to see, you know, we, what we've been talking about all summer. And we're going to be seeing it in action today. It almost doesn't seem real, Game 1, Hus. We've been literally <laughs> waiting for this since, I don't know, the end of last season, like the day it ended. Yeah, and, uh, you know, listen, it, it has been a very interesting off offseason. Um, there were some things that happened that we expected, some others that didn't. And, um, you know, there's a lot of returning players from a club that was, you know, had a disappointing season last year. But I think it's been very clear to anybody that's been around the hockey club uh, that it's a very different team, very different outlook and attitude amongst the group. And I think that energy and positivity from Coach Rick Bonus has um, certainly been exactly what the doctor ordered throughout the preseason. Now we'll see whether that can translate into some better results on the ice when the puck drops tonight just after 7 p.m. Um, we'll get to the Jets and, and Rick Bonus in a minute. Um, we have had the pleasure of... Uh, you know, getting maybe a little bit of a sneak peek to some things happening behind the scenes tonight. I can tell you that the Lady Bing Trophy is on the concourse right now. And I know fans will be able to uh, have an opportunity to get a picture with that hardware won by Kyle Connor uh, at the game tonight. The 50-50 remote is starting at 50 grand tonight. The biggest starting pot ever in Winnipeg Jets 50-50 history, and we know some people like that. If you're not able to the game, believe you can get in on that. Check the website for it. And, uh, and I guess the big thing, and we'll get some more information on Sarah, is uh, you know how season ticket holders can access their discounts and all the other bells and whistles that they've dropped in that new app, which is live. And um, you, if you are a season ticket holder or a package holder, you'll be able to use your discounts as a part of coming to the game tonight. Yeah, my dad's a season ticket holder, so I made sure to tell him. I was like, Dad, you're going to have to get the Winnipeg Jets app now. You can put your membership on there. You get the discounts. But even if you're not a season ticket holder, it seems pretty cool. You can collect pucks for completing certain tasks. It's like, almost like a game, you know, going to a Moose game or a Jets game, watching at home, uh, you know, sp spending money on merchandise, uh, whatever it is. So Sarah's going to explain it better than I can, but it seems uh, a pretty cool way for the team and fans to stay engaged while earning rewards. And, oh, yeah, how could I forget possible uh, discounts for events? And Remus here. approved deals. Yeah, I, and need, Remus approved I need the deals. deals. I need the deals. Um, and, and you know what? I mean, you just mentioned, I mean, the opportunity with the app to kind of get some credit for doing other things. Um, this is part of a very, very busy, well, next four days here. Um, we've got a game every day right up through till Monday. Uh, or actually, I shouldn't say that. The St. Louis game is the following weekend. But Jets play tonight. Then they don't play Saturday or Sunday and then begin a quick road trip with three games in four nights on Monday away. And then, of course, game two of the regular season is the Toronto Maple Leafs coming up a week from Saturday. That should be a fun one. Um, but it's not just the Jets tonight, Reem. We, of course, have the Manitoba Moose starting off and dropping the puck both 2 p.m. tomorrow and 2 p.m. Sunday. Big game for the Moose, though, of course, will be kicking off the season tomorrow in front of their home fans. Great chat with Nolan Baumgartner yesterday on Winnipeg Sports Talk. If you missed it, go back and check out the YouTube replay. And I have to tell you, you now with Dominic Toninato, Jansen Harkins, Brad uh, Brad Lambert, the Lambo signing this week, um, Billy Hainala being back with the club. Um, this is I, I would expect more people to be really dialed in and interested in what the Moose are doing on a day to day, game to game basis than maybe have been for the last little while. And um, that's a great thing for hockey here in this city. And uh, the buzz around downtown heading into tonight. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. As I'm very excited for the, see what this Moose team looks like. Chaz Lucius, Brad Lambert, former first-round picks. But then also you have the NHL veterans, guys who spend a lot of time in the National Hockey League. And I feel like they haven't really had that uh, the last couple of years with significant, you've know, played significant minutes like Jansen Harkins and Dominic Toninato now. And the defense growing, Chisholm, Kavanka, Vili Hainala. Um, this could be a very strong Manitoba Moose team. And back-to-back -back games here, Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. 
Yeah, and uh, uh, listen, all the focus is going to be on tonight, but don't forget about that Moose game tomorrow. And if you haven't already, Dan Fink did join us earlier this week, and uh, the Fink said that he did have a little promo code for folks. So if uh, you want to take advantage of uh, the Fink's offer on a $15 ticket, you can uh, fire him a DM on Twitter at Daniel the Fink, and uh, hopefully that will still be available for uh, for fans. Um, but here we go tonight, Remo. As we mentioned, I mean, we'll get to the Jets for a minute, but, uh, man, this New York Rangers team has had a busy, busy week. Uh, we had the morning skate here, and it was just a couple of lonely souls out here that will not be part of the lineup tonight. Uh, but one positive for the Winnipeg Jets, in addition to the grind that the Rangers have already been through over the past three days, is the fact that we're the fact that we're expecting Shesterkin, the Vesna Trophy winner, to get a night off after playing the first two games, and be interesting to see Yarrow Halak in his new, uh, the very well traveled Yarrow Halak in his new home in New York, with uh, getting his first start against uh, a former Vesna Trophy winner himself, and Connor Hellebuck will be handling the Winnipeg Jets net. Yeah, New York Rangers uh, look pretty damn good last night, scoring what was it, seven goals against Minnesota, and they look pretty good taking off. Uh, they're not the defending cup champions anymore. Almost feels weird to say after after back-to-back, -back, but after knocking off Tampa in game one. And Minnesota, they're no soldiers. They're projected to be uh, second in the division. They've, you know, they lost Kevin Fiel, but they have a lot of a lot of good players in 7-3. Um, I think for the Rangers, it seems like some of their young players who had an impact last year, um, taking a bit of a step forward, Capo Caco getting top minutes. He's, you know, former top pick and former number one overall. I see a lot of people saying uh, Alexei Lafreniere, it's going to be his big breakout season in, in New York. So they have a lot of talent, especially on defense. We're going to get our first look at uh, Jacob Truba with the C on his sweater in blue. So uh, I think this is a very strong Rangers team, very tough test for game one. However, However, no time zone switching for the Rangers, no time zone switching, but they did take that short flight here, landed in late. I saw the Rangers media tweeting they left around, uh, was it like 11, 11 p.m.? So I don't know what, that, what time you get to at sleep. At the earliest, yeah. 11. I mean, the game was at, just after 7. I mean, that's a quick turnaround. I'm sure they got in, you know, 12, 30, 1, 1, 30, something like that. And listen, it's not new for any team in the National Hockey League. However, you know, first week of the season... <clears throat> Something you haven't done in a while. Um, backup goalie coming in. A lot of excitement around here. Hopefully it can go, uh, hopefully it can be a great start for the Winnipeg Jets this evening. Um, one thing I can tell you is that I am fired up to see this Shifley, Connor, uh, and Nikolai Ehlers line. I don't know how long we've been talking about Nikolai Ehlers as a guy that is worthy and has earned a larger profile and a better spot right now in the Jets lineup. Well, he's getting that right now. And the Dubois line with Perfetti and Wheeler, as we've been talking the last couple days, I mean, storylines around Wheeler, storyline around Dubois from the offseason, uh, very bright future for a young and unproven Cole Perfetti. Um, that is a line that I think is, um, well, there's certainly some questions about it, but I think there's some great potential in it as well. And uh, then, of course, you get to Adam Lowry, who was back. And Adam Lowry, as we mentioned yesterday, we just spent a lot of time talking about this because it almost seemed like it was fait accompli beforehand, Remo, but Lowry will be a guy wearing the A, certainly has been a leader for a long time, and Rick Bonus touched on that a little bit yesterday and today, why um, everyone is part of a leader, but you got to have three A's, and Adam Lowry is certainly a deserving member of the club that uh, will uh, continue leading by example. Yeah, Nikolai Ehlers, we've been waiting for him. When's this guy going to get time on power play one? Um, you don't want to see him get some top minutes, and he's getting a huge opportunity this year starting the season with Mark Shifley and, <laughs> Mark Shifley and Kyle Connor. And Connor, you, you know, he can score goals. They, I mean, these guys had some beautiful passing plays in the preseason. You just get a taste of what it could be like if they played together for, for a full season. Uh, if they click, if everything goes well, and they can play well defensively, um, this could be a very strong line here for the Winnipeg Jets. And Adam Lowry, I mean, we thought he was a natural pick uh, when they announced that they were changing the leadership group. You know, Mark Shifley and Josh Morrissey had A's last year, but Adam Lowry gets the elevated role, and um, I think well-deserved. He's, you know, guy, you know, quiet leader. He's, you know, some people will be like, well, he's not one of the top scorers. How can you be a leader? But I think he definitely leads by example on the ice 
and he's a respected guy in the dressing room. So uh, no, no surprise to me. And I know when we even said who should be the new captain, there were definitely some votes out there for Adam Lowry. Well, and you know what? Let's get to the why not question of the day because um, you know this is not maybe as much of our one of our traditional questions, um, but it's last call for hot takes and bold predictions this season. Hit us up in the comments of the YouTube channel so they can be uh, preserved for the entire year. And you can go back and say, I told you so to everybody by uh, clicking on the link and uh, seeing what you threw down. Um, Adam Lowry, I I'm really high on Adam Lowry. And I know that he has been given a bit of a rap of a guy that, you know, certainly a very good defensive player. I mean, a good shutdown guy on a shutdown line, but has not been you know, a prolific offensive player. And listen, he's never going to be Pierre-Luc Dubois or Mark Shifley. Uh, but I, here's my bold prediction. Adam Lowry has the best season of his NHL career this year. I joked last week or earlier this week that, you know, the first 50-odd games of the season, more often than not, Adam Lowry was carrying around Christian Veselainen like a grand <laughs> piano on his back. And when you look, when Veselina was no longer part of that group, um, basically post-All-Star break afterwards, Lowry was I mean, far more productive offensively and was also you know, generating a lot on the PK as well. And he'll certainly be a big part of that. So um, tell you what, I don't have in front of me what his career highs are right now. You do? What's, what's, his, what's, his, career, what's his best season as a Winnipeg well, Jet? Well, I'm bringing up his um, his splits. And, yeah, post-All-Star break, he had 13 points in 37 games. Uh, Pre-All-Star break, he had 8 in 42. And he had that, that big March in April where he had four goals in March in 13 games, three goals in April. If you want to look at career highs here, uh, career highs here, Hus. Uh, sorry, let me just pull it up on the Hockey Reference, my favorite site. Nice work on those splits. I didn't know that those were available. You yeah, have to get uh, on that Hockey, hockey Reference site. I'm I, usually a DB guy. I love No, Hockey Reference is good for some splits. I mean, 29 points in 82 games in 16-17. Uh, he had 15 goals there and 14 assists. So that, that would be the career high. And look, he's 29. Uh, he's in his 29-year-old season. So let's see if he can, you know, play with some, you know, players as you said that aren't uh, grand piano, and maybe it'll work out. He's playing with uh, Green Ray with Mason Appleton here, uh, Morgan Barron. We're gonna get a look at him since the trade from the Rangers. I know he played a couple games last year. Revenge game narrative for Morgan yeah. Barron. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh man, I might have to. I might just have to take a look at a Morgan Barron goal prop when we do the cool bet lines a little later on today. Forgot about that revenge narrative that we could toss into the show today. Yeah, well, there's also the, J I don't know, is Jacob Truba, is that is that done? We've already done that. That's done. That's, 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 done. that's long over. ago. By the way, and I think yeah. we might have touched on this week, but Emily Kaplan of ESPN yeah. did a really, really cool um, piece on Jacob Truba, his wife, and listen, I know that was a big story. And I mean, I was one of the people that said, oh, what? There's no hospitals in Winnipeg or hospitals anywhere else. Um, Emily did an amazing job of telling the story of what those two went through, how it's worked out so well for Jacob. And now obviously the captain, as well as what his wife went through, both health wise and becoming the doctor she is right now. So highly recommended a great piece. And um, listen, I think Jacob Truba. We'll uh, come back. He'll be, uh, I guess he might get a little Bronx cheer from a few fans. But um, listen, he uh, he certainly did his part here in Winnipeg for a long time and was missed when he was no longer there. That being said, the Jet Blue line is going to look very similar that it did last year. Maybe not something that we expected throughout the offseason, but that is where we are right now. Um, here we go. Josh Morrissey and Dylan DeMello. Brendan Dillon playing with Neil Pionk. And Logan Stanley is that guy. How many times did we say, Remo, the question with all of our guests, who's going to be the sixth defenseman if there are no moves? Well, Logan Stanley is that guy on day one. Rick Bonus spoke yesterday uh, about, you know, maybe liking the, uh, the how he progressed through the preseason. I didn't think he had a great start to the preseason. Uh, but honestly, in that role, I mean, I know there's some people that, you know, it, it's so polarizing, Stanley and Hainala and, only, only in a Canadian market would the entire fan base be divided on 
who should be the sixth defenseman. Um, but obviously he did some things that, um, you know, that earned his spot in the lineup. That being said, I think there still is plenty of competition for that spot. And, uh, you know, for the Winnipeg Jets, hopefully Logan Stanley can come out, have a great start to the season, which I don't think happened last year. Uh, and Dylan Sandberg, of course, knocking on the door and certainly should be getting into the lineup relatively soon. As far as up front, we talked about this line. I, I think, really do think Remo, it has the potential to be one of the best lines in the National Hockey League. Kyle Connor, Mark Shifley, and Nikolai Ehlers. Um, and I've loved what we've seen so far from them over the course of the preseason. Not just the fact that they've been quite prolific, have looked great on the power play, have looked good at five on five, and have been able to score, but the... Uh, the increased attention to detail and energy defensively is going to be something that they simply have to do to be the line that um, helps this team get to where they want to be, and that's participating in the playoffs once we're finished 82 games. Pierre-Luc Dubois, Blake Wheeler, Cole Perfetti, line number two, and Mason Appleton has ditched the non-contact jersey. He'll be back riding shotgun with Adam Lowry on line three, and as we mentioned, Morgan Barron will get that spot in the on the third line. And the fourth line, an entirely new-look fourth line, and I'll tell you what, Remo, I am here for it. David Gustafson, the Gus bus. Let's hope he can get through that first period and the first game healthy because he had some terrible luck last year. Um, but the new guy, uh, Saku Metalainen on the left side, and number 89, Sam Gagne, the NHL veteran, playing on that jet fourth line. And uh, I'll be interested to see how Rick Bonus divvies up the ice time and how that group does when they're out on the ice against a pretty deep New York Rangers hockey club. Yeah, Dominic Toninato, Jansen Harkin spending a lot of time down there last season. And uh, look, the Jets didn't get a lot of offense from their bottom, you know, bottom two lines. That was definitely an issue for them. And how do you fix that? Well, bring it entirely new guys david gustafson we had been pounding the door for the gus bus all season and when he you know parked the parked uh, on center ice uh, he got injured but he's here he's healthy we're looking forward to seeing what he can bring uh, at even strength and on the penalty kill and uh, we talked about the sam gagne signing since it's happened we're a fan um you know veteran player he's got offensive ability he can play in all situations and all positions so he can definitely be an asset for this team and oh yeah he signed a, a veteran minimum contract so um and Saku Minnelli, hey he won the job he won the uh what was it the triple triple yeah, threat he, he the did four way the yeah. fatal four way it was almost more a battle royal yeah i mean <laughs> when you think about the beginning of camp there were so many other guys he was throwing guys over yeah. the top rope one practice one preseason game after it all and uh here we go his prize is a starting spot for Rick Bonus in his opening day lineup in front of the fans here at Canada Life Center. A um, couple things, and we'll get to this with Sarah actually when she joins us in just a second. A nice giveaway tonight, uh, the new 50 50, but also the app, the new content from the Winnipeg Jets, which we'll get to. Listen, before we do that, got to give a big shout out to our friends over at Consolidated Supply, um, our newest sponsor, and I know the office, I'm sure, over there is buzzing today. Big Jet fans, WST listeners as well. And um, I know the guys are ready for the season. Uh, now, as we get into winter, you might already be thinking of next year. Irrigation for your lawn. How are you going to make it look as lush and green as possible? Like the golf courses that the consolidated guys work on. Or maybe you're thinking about getting some artificial turf in there so you don't have to deal with it anymore. Maybe putting together that dream putting, yard, uh, putting green in the backyard. Longtime listener Joe will help you out down at Consolidated Supply. He can also help you. Listen, golf carts, they are the golf cart kings working with Club Car. If you're thinking about getting a tricked, uh, tricked out one, maybe a nice little Christmas present for the family, for the cottage next year, they can help you with that. And in addition to big projects looking ahead to next year, Hot tub sales are going crazy. They've got some incredible hot tubs there, as well as outdoor kitchens and more. Consolidated Supply, check them out online at cte.ca and uh, pop down and see them. 1395 Niagara Road East. Uh, our friends at Vita Health right now as we get into, uh, into fall, I think have been very busy. Listen, they are the, uh, the spot for the best selection of uh, beauty products, uh, natural products, and of course, groceries, supplements, and more. And uh, with a lot of people getting sick today, uh, in and around, this is a perfect time to pop into Vita Health and, uh, 
you know, help you boost that immunity system as much as you can as we get into the, uh, well, the snow flying, which, of course, we saw a little bit of snow flying today. Vita Health also has an amazing grab-and-go deli with delicious and healthy, fresh Vita Market salad, soups, and sandwiches, and are the spot with the best selection of local and organic products around. Pop down and see them at any of one of seven Winnipeg locations, including the newest store in Linden Ridge, or check them out online at their fully shoppable website at myvita.ca. And uh, folks, behind the scenes, we've been working with our friends at Wallace and Wallace on a really, really cool program that I hope we'll be able to launch next week, um, leading on some of all of you and uh, the great community work we have. Um, and we'll tell you about that. In the meantime, uh, Wallace and Wallace is the spot. If you're worried, if you've got a, maybe a kink in the garage door or some issues with the garage door before they, the snow flies, Give them a call over at Wallace and Wallace or pop down and see them at 90 Lawson Road. I mean, they do work with Clopay, 101, 161 different types of garage doors that can get you set set up for your home if you're looking for something new. Uh, but they've also uh, got great service department. I know they took care of Remus's. He certainly didn't know how to fix it. And uh, they can be there for you as well. Check them out online, wallacedoors.com. Of course, they're the fencing experts for decades here, wallacefences.com as well. Or pop down and see them at their showroom over on Lawson Road. And uh, i got to give a shout-out to DQ Nick. I know Dick, he'll be here tonight. He'll be uh, ready for the big game. Um, but now we got jet season here, moose season here. I know the kids are having birthday parties. Uh, hit them up on Instagram at DQ Manitoba. Uh, they'll get you a great DQ ice cream cake for your next event. And, of course, when you got that craven, pop down to any of the four Nick and Nicky DQ locations, DQ Niverville, DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, and DQ St. Anne's. Grab a stack burger, a blizzard, maybe some of those honey barbecue chicken fingers as well. All right, I think it's time to bring in our friend Sarah Orleski, who is going to uh, pop on if... Uh, She's got the time for us. Lots to get to with Sarah. Looking forward to hear all about her new role with the Winnipeg Jets. And, of course, the post-game show. Of course, the post-game show, which we are going to uh, be checking out afterwards today on all of the Winnipeg Jet channels. And fans are going to need to get all the latest on the new app, which is live right now and we'll be using tonight when we get going. Uh, look who's here. Welcome, Sarah. How are you? I am so I'm happy to be joining you, but I'm thrilled that it's actually in person as opposed to just having to do it virtually. Well, you know what? I have to thank Krista and the staff here. I mean, I sort of threw that idea out. I mean, uh, it's, listen, we were going to be here for the game tonight. We wanted to get down for the morning skate, and sometimes it's difficult with the timing of what we're doing to kind of turn that around and get back. So if there was ever a time we were going to do it, Fire it this up. This is it. Home I love opener. It. Let's go tonight against the New York Rangers. First off, how's it been going for you? How are you enjoying the uh, transition from TSN and uh, now getting ready for the big night for you and, of course, the team and the organization? Well, it's been really, it's been great. I've been very busy. <laughs> That's I can I, imagine. So the work-life balance hasn't necessarily been great, if you ask my husband, but it's been a ton of fun. I'm enjoying it so much, learning so much, and just really been able to jump right in. And, of course, you know, when I finished with TSN, it was at the Banjo Bowl. And so that was September 10th. And so I immediately got right into doing everything with the Jets. So it's just been going full full steam ahead with it and looking forward to finally. I don't know about everybody else, but I understand, obviously, the necessity that preseason is. But I am so happy, let's just say, the preseason is done for it. I am looking forward to games well, that Well, I'm count. with you as well, although... Um I mean, I know we've been doing this for a while. We've been following this team since 2011. I was more interested and locked into these preseason games than I think I've been before, partly from the reason that we've had such a big change with the new head coach and, you know, a very interesting camp with a bunch of competition with some new players in the lineup right now and just to see how things would work. And we've certainly had some indications on how Rick Bonus has handled the club and some of the things he's handled the media and one of the, some of the things that he said out there. Um, but again, that was all the preseason. Tonight is what it's all about. The energy of the building, the fans back in, and uh, a big chance for the Jets to try to start their season on the right foot against a very good hockey team in the New York Rangers. Well, you would probably have a great sense just from all of your viewers and interacting with them as well. But I think that the the excitement for this team has continued to grow and grow um, with each passing day of training camp in the preseason. And I think that 
the questions that people had about them, that it's turned into genuine excitement with this to see what Rick Bonus and his coaching staff have been able to do with the team. We know that he wants them to play aggressive. We know that his mentality and his approach with it is that everything has to be earned regardless of who you are. And, and I think that they're because of that is a lot to look forward to with this and to see how they respond. I mean, the players, there seems to be an energy and also in a, I don't want to say a happiness because that's not necessarily the word that I'm looking for, but just there is an energy and a, a newness and a freshness to this group that I haven't felt in the more recent years in camp. Uh, kind of as you said too, so when you walk around, guys just, I mean, they seem happy in there and I think that they feel excited to see what they're able to do with this. There's so much potential, I think, for this group. Well, you know what, I'll give, uh, I'll give some real credit to uh, some of your new colleagues who have been working on like the social media side of things. I know Kyle and his staff getting ready to go for what's happening tonight. Um, been some really I, I think we've seen more of that basically from the players I think fans even from afar before getting into the building tonight have had a good chance to sort of see the atmosphere and the attitude around and the personality this club. <clears throat> we've just seen exactly we've seen and oh he said that and we know that when you look at if you were to generalize that you don't see the same sort of outward personality from a lot of NHL players that you do from a number of um, athletes in other professional sports. But I've always said, these guys on this team, they have some great personalities. We just really haven't seen them to the same extent before. You always hear about it or sometimes you'd see it in the dressing room, but I don't think fans really got to be able to experience it the same way. And so I think that guys have really been embracing it. And you've certainly seen it, I think, with some of the things that um, the content group with the Jets has tried to do in terms of being able to loosen the guys up and, and just show some of well, that. Well, and you know what? And listen, and you know what? It's credit to them, too. I mean, you'd have to have buy-in from the team and 100%. the entire organization. But, uh, you know, as someone that, you know, listen, I mean, is also a fan It comes to games. I mean, that's the sort of thing that, you know, you want to see. You want to connect the people with the team as well as possible. And they've been doing a real good job of that so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing that continue. Well, let's bring that to, is there a couple things we want to talk about that I think fans will want to know going into this season? But let's talk about the content. I mean, we joked that the biggest free agent signing of the summer is sitting right beside <laughs> me right now. Um I guess first things first, for game day, tell us about the post game. I mean, we've got a lot of people that have been kind of transitioning to getting tons of their content from streaming services, the internet. Most of the people, everyone watching live is on YouTube right now. All of the Jet platforms will be uh, having you on afterwards with this new Jets post game show. Um, Tell us about it and know what people can look forward to, hopefully celebrating a first win of the season tonight. Well, what we're trying to do is bring a little bit more... Um engagement player engagement into it as well so you know when we used to see it years ago but hadn't i mean obviously with everything that had gone on with covid in recent years mm -hmm. haven't been able to see it but we're going to have players again coming stopping in on set um to speak to nice. us post game you'll be able to hear um live from in the dressing rooms post game reaction coach podium as well and then we'll have analysis too and um, rotation of different analysts that'll be coming on. So we're looking for, you know, right after the game, be able to pop up. You'll be able to watch it in about a half hour post game show and be able to talk about everything that happened. And again, uh, what I'm really looking forward to is being able to have players come and join us as well. Well, right? absolutely. And I mean, listen, COVID, um, and you would know this intimately from being, you know, part of the broadcast on the TSN side of things. Um, Everything was different the last few years, yeah. and it made um, pretty much everybody's job trying to, and, and listen, from a team's perspective as well, even if they wanted to do things, you had rules and regulations that weren't allowed, and hey, listen, we were all thankful that the game was able to keep going on, and we were able to see it, but it certainly does feel like not only kind of getting back to normal, but getting back to a new normal that hopefully will be uh, much better for the team and, of course, fans as well. The post game. Are you guys going to be getting going like basically right after puck drop? What's the uh, what's the yeah, time frame? Right on after. That? So after the um, we'll show the three stars, but yeah. So it'll be it'll be just moments after the game ends that we'll be up and and taking everybody through everything. When you mentioned just how you know with everything that everyone had to deal with um, in terms of trying to do their jobs and interacting with COVID, said so for a couple of seasons. I mean, players would come and go from the Jets. 
And I would never actually meet them face to face. Yeah, no I kidding. was joking. So I had messaged um, Nate Thompson after he had left here. And I said, because we had done intermission interviews with him, but I'd never actually met him face to face, which was after a whole season. So I said to him that, you know, I... I appreciate it. Just sending a message. Thanks for everything. Really odd that we never actually met. <laughs> it was just, but, you know, you'll, but always appreciate it. You know, a few time. years, we will look back and hopefully be in a much better place as things continue to rebound. But we'll think back to just those things that became normal and how weird they were. Um, all that being said, I'm just happy that we're going to be able to have pack fans in here tonight and uh, see this team play and, and get to see the new content coming from, uh, from you afterwards uh, with the team. Who's, do we know who the, the team of uh, that's going to be joining you today? Uh, you, do you want to tease the people that will be with throughout the season or at least no. for night one tonight? No, they have to tune in. <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, I can't give this away all now in the middle of the afternoon. Hey, hey, this Big J Journal right here just trying he to ask all the tough he questions. He tried. I give you full credit, but that's a no. <laughs> well, the people are there for you, and everyone else no. will be lucky to be sharing the stage with you. But can I, I do want to talk about, just briefly to expand on the content, besides the post-game show, I mean, we've got such a – um, a great group in the content department that's really excited to be adding new elements. But I want to touch briefly, if I can, on the runway series. Um, I was just about to okay. ask. Again, Big J, I'm here with that's all the questions. That's it. Well, uh, look at that. I totally... Fill us in. Where do we find it? And uh, why? Why? Because I've talked to a bunch of people within the organization that are very excited about what this is going to be and uh, how fans are going to react. So if fans remember that last year on the Jets broadcasts on TSN that we aired Flight Path, which took you through the journeys that players um, had throughout their hockey career and up into the NHL for it. So this year, though, to change it up, and it's a behind-the-scenes look. And so the, it is um, – you'll be able to catch that on the TSN Jets broadcasts originally. And that's where they will premiere, and then they, come up, they go on to the Winnipeg Jets platform. So you'll be able to see them, view them multiple times as well, which you'll want to when you get a load of episode one. You're going to love it. I expect a text from you afterwards <laughs> about it. But it's so it's to give fans more. Exactly what you said about fans wanting to see the personalities, wanting to um, engage differently. And fandom, I think, has really evolved. And we know how popular that pulling back the curtain and getting that sense of behind the scenes. So this isn't going to be, um, this isn't going to be a series in which it is followed, you know, every two weeks that it's going to be um, different moments or different times in, in the season, different road trips sort of thing and give people that be behind the scenes look at it. So the one that premieres tonight takes a look at training camp and we just, it's been access that, um, no one has had before with the Winnipeg Jets, so really looking forward to it. And the buy-in from the players so far and from coaches has been tremendous. So I'm hoping everybody really enjoys it. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And the good thing is you won't even need to PVR it tonight, although it might be a good idea. Hopefully you can come back after you go to the game and watch the entire big first Jets win, fingers crossed, <laughs> and it'll be there. Uh, but it will be available after premiering on TSN on all of the other channels. Um, and I guess the other thing for people to know, and this is one of the great things about you know, the YouTube space that we're in right now. Um, if you're unable to watch it when it's live, it's there for you afterwards. So, I mean, I I'm just throwing out there. I have a feeling some people might go out for a few after the game tonight. Uh, they might get home a little late. You is can watch you? it when you get home. Is this I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> is this uh, people? <laughs> <laughs> um, and listen, or you can get at, get it uh, after tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning. Um, um, so listen, yeah. it, it's, it's a great, great development. Uh, I think we're all looking forward to seeing what you and the Jets team have for us starting off after the game. And the advent and inclusion of player interviews afterwards is going to be uh, a massive, massive um, boost, I think, for everything you guys are trying to do. Um, there's a lot of other things going on, and I mentioned this right off the bat, but, I mean, we know people love 50-50s. They love deals. <laughs> they go on. I can tell you the biggest sweetened starting pot ever for the game is 50K and growing since 9.30 a.m. this morning. The Lady Bing Trophy is here for yeah, uh, folks that want to come and get a picture with the hardware won by Jetstar Kyle Connor last year. But the other big thing that I think will be new, well, it will be new for everybody tonight, is using the new Jets app. And the launch, uh, well, really was yesterday. I mean, obviously, I have tickets. I got on, linked my 
account up through it. Now it seems to be it's going to be very simple to get the QR code up for uh, the discount for season ticket holders, but there's way, way, way more to it. I mean, uh, where do you want to start with what people need to know to begin as far as the app goes? Well, the benefit of the app is that it's that one-stop shop, and it's not just going to be able to give you your information and your tickets for the Jets. It's for also for the moose and it's for all events in the Canada Life Center. You can also you get rewards when you're using it. I know that Remus I had a good talk about rewards earlier. Yep. Yeah, he's ready for his pox. He wants that Mikey Esamont jersey. So but and if you are a season ticket holder, the discounts that you uh, that you get with that will be linked to your app as well. So it's just it's really this one stop shop for everybody. And at this point in time, I know that my phone has you know number of apps and I'm looking for convenience <laughs> with it isn't it true I mean as opposed to going all over the place and that's what this app has it's and you're able to find out all the information that you want when you look at the Winnipeg Jets you're able to get content on there you're able to get um, up to the minute stats and information on the team as well so it is a must-have for the hockey fan uh, here in Manitoba. Here we are right now. So I just downloaded it. And again, uh, it's brand new. So if you had the old Jets NHL app, you got to get the new one here. It'll link your Ticketmaster account, uh, your season ticket account, your Moose account, uh, concert accounts, all in one spot. So I just bought it up. There it is, Andrew Patterson. And boom, for tonight's game, my tickets, New York Rangers, one through, and I'm good to go rolling yeah. in like that. Quite simple. Now, getting into the game is one thing. Uh, we talked also about the ability to uh, fire up your QR code for folks that do have packages to take advantage of their discounts. But there's also... Um, you know, some rewards that are in for, uh, oh, you're going to go to a Moose game, make sure you check in on that. I mean, that's because going to be something that I'm sure is sort of starting this weekend, but will continue to grow throughout the uh, throughout the season um, and things will be added on throughout the year. Absolutely. And, and I mean, who doesn't love when you get when you get rewards? And get, I get excited sometimes. My daughter and I looked the other day. She was excited about her McDonald's app. And just getting <laughs> she's like, she goes, you know, we have a free pop. <laughs> so, get it, mom. That's right. But the um, but the idea of being able to get more for it and to be able to get those rewards going for it and continue to grow with them, uh, I think is going to be a big hit as well. You're able, there are um, different challenges, different games that you can play while here inside the building as well. So there's just, there's a lot to do with it. It is not simply put that spot where you go and show your ticket because it's not just about being linked to the Ticketmaster account. It's also about everything else that you get with it. Yeah, the uh, and you, you can find out more at the website about the Jets 360 reward program, but that is the only way to access the Jets 360 reward program. We talked about participating in challenges, earning reports, you get pox, you get to go in for draws, and you know some exclusive your things 50, that 50 won't tickets? be there. The 50-50 as well. <laughs> and that'll be a nice and easy thing. You can just do it basically from your uh, from your seat. From your seat. I love... I'm good. I mean, I don't want to seem lazy. Has I love anything that I can do for my seat. Anything that I can order while being or purchase while there. Ah, I'm all for it. Uh, the other thing that's neat, and this is sort of building on what they've done the last couple of years, and fans that have been at a number of games will know that. Um, in game experience, interactive in arena games, uh, some of the giveaways that I'm sure they'll be doing with the sponsors, you'll all be able to do that for the app. So basically, what you're going to need to do, go to the App Store for you Apple folks. If you're on a, if you're not on Apple, go to the Google Play, um, get it, set it up, and um, use it tonight. And I would imagine through the app and the website, um, we'll have continued more new content from yourself, the entire team that uh, has been a great start to the season. But as I said, much like the team, you guys are just getting started tonight as well. Absolutely. And I'm I'm so excited to see, I mean, I been mentioned with the new series, Runway, the behind the scenes series, just that, that additional access. And one of the things, and I think we might have spoken about this when I first took um, the position and it was announced, I'm just, I'm excited to be able to tell stories for it and to have, and to be able to, help fans learn more about these players beyond there's so many great platforms and so many great places where you can talk about all the X's and O's um, on the ice and you guys do a great job but but I also know that the way that people 
consume everything now and wow, how people love this team so much. People want to know more and more about the players <laughs> off the ice as well for it. I've never had so many people excited about apparently what type of ice cream players eat. I mean, <laughs> s- s- things that on the surface one might think, no, no one would really be interested but people are for it. And so, um, although we'll get a little bit more in depth <laughs> than just what type of ice cream they like, that it is hey, great to be hey, able to show more personality. I, I, I was joking. Them. I was joking with uh, with Krista. We were talking earlier because uh, we are going to do some fun stuff with some concession items here <gasps> and uh, in the coming weeks. And uh, I would go to the ballpark this summer for the Gold Eyes games, and I would – fire out a picture of the pierogies or the butter chicken that I had one day. And Remus is like, you know, we can have the best interview. We can have the best guest and we'll put it up on all our socials and we'll have really good engagement. And then you throw out a chili dog from the ballpark and it's doubling everything else. People are into food takes yes. and you can learn a lot of, about people through what they like. It's so true. Some of them people don't want to admit to. Let's be honest that it, <laughs> it's the guilty pleasures. But one of my favorite stories that I did when I was at um, TSN, I was I went and covered the U.S. Open um, one year, and so it, Flushing Meadows, and and you're walking around this. Ma- I mean, I can't even begin. If you haven't, if you're a tennis fan, it's a must event to go to. But um, we did this feature on the food that's available around them. I've never had so much fun. A little (laughs) self-conscious about the fact that I was eating on camera so much, but they have, I mean, they have such food and it was just put out in front of me and had to test it. Um, I understand how if people had a cooking show that you, I mean, have the potential to (laughs) pack on a few pounds. It's a labor of love for many of those (laughs) chefs and even better, the customers customers. of of scented people. Sarah at the buffet. Usually we think of the buffet for Ken Weeb, who will join us in a few minutes. The verbal buffet. Um, But uh, and there is a bunch of new stuff tonight. Actually, we're going to get a sneak peek at a few things. Check out our social channels later on at Sports Talk WPG, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Facebook, I guess, too, wherever you got it. And uh, maybe over the course of the weekend, we'll drop some of that. But, yes, we are going to plan a little sneak peek on a few of the new things with the chef over the course of the next couple of weeks. That is the episode and show that I want (laughs) to be on with you. (laughs) This is great today. Don't get me wrong. Season opener, home (laughs) opener. That's great. I have, and I will, I admit this, I have never had a jet dog or, I know, for it. Sarah never... takes on the two foot monster dog next week. Yeah. On uh, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. The jet dog was already so huge. To double it in size, that you know, as much as I'm excited to watch the game tonight, I will be walking the concourse to see if I can get my eyes on one of those things. Are you going to have one later on? Well, I'm gonna probably walk before I run for this season, yeah. but I, I think <laughs> I will commit. I will commit. <laughs> At some point, we will take it down. I do. I have a feeling that's probably something that's not maybe a single serving. Right. Although, although if there was some sort of a challenge involved, oh, I got Kyle around. There's a few guys I think we could line up to maybe. There's see no. What we can I just do. want to say there's no. There's no judgment. No, if it's a, not if around it's here. A, I'll if tell it's you a that. single serving, that is just. When fine. you live in a large glass mansion like some <laughs> of us do, we're not throwing any stones when it comes to anything like that. Sarah Orleski from the Winnipeg Jets is with us. Make sure after the game tonight, you pop on the Jets channels, whether it's on the website, whether it's on the YouTube channel and see the debut of the new post game show really looking forward to that um you know we've talked about everything around the game that being said uh it's an exciting team right now a lot of new players let me ask you because you have been behind the scenes um and i know this will all come out in content going forward but um was there has there been a player that you've got to know a little bit more kind of has really stood out going man i never knew this guy was that funny or maybe he's a really outgoing dude or maybe just some of the new players that really don't know that have made a big impression well i mean we haven't had a ton of opportunity in that sense yet because they were they were in banff and i wasn't in banff so i'm looking forward to being able to get to know a bunch of the new players much more and just seeing all of the personalities come out but i am excited to see what this team can do because i think that from my perspective so often going into a season i always felt as if we were able to say okay i'm expecting the team to be in the top three in the division or this is a team that will fight for the wild card spot and i felt like going into this 
training camp that there was just there were there were more questions than what we were used to seeing in the past of not knowing. But when you watch them, again, the buy-in that seems to exist by indications of the team into and the players into what Rick Bonus is selling for it right now, I think that it has so much potential to put together such an exciting product on the ice for fans, but really obviously produce the results as well. They don't have an easy start to the schedule. We know that. I mean, their first, when you look at just their first five games, alone, it'll be a great test for them. But I think that there is that energy with it. And I just, I, I think that this is a team that is going to surprise a lot of people. We heard the chip on their shoulder in the first couple of days of camp that they have something to prove. I think that they certainly have the potential to prove a lot of people and get people talking about them once again. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I think that we, um, you know, we've focused on a lot of the stuff that's come out of the out of the club with, that I was talking about the social media. It's been sort of the fun, upbeat stuff um, that has been a lot of the atmosphere around it. But when you peel that back on these players as competitors, as professionals, um, to a man, players that were on this team last year, didn't like the way that it went and this is the first of 82 opportunities to get that right and uh got to tell you we heard rick bonus sort of cracking the whip yesterday in practice reiterating and he's done it a number of times in some different ways but it seems like that message is getting through i mean the only one way to know it is when things when the bright lights go on tonight at canada life center but i will say this um that level of uh commitment to moving past last season mm -hmm. and um and frankly, proving a few people wrong, I think, is something that can really help a team right out of the gate and hopefully for the entire campaign. Well, I love teams that play with a chip on their shoulder. <laughs> Athletes, teams as a whole, because they do. I think that any time that you don't have the opportunity to get complacent and you don't have the opportunity to rest on what you've done before, you have to prove people wrong. And you think about all of the expectations. You know, We don't want to talk about last season because we've talked about it ad nauseum with it, but... There were so many expectations, and so much of this group, whether so much of this group has returned. So, a lot of these players were expected to put up big games last year and have great seasons. It didn't turn out that way. They have something to prove. We know they're capable of it. I think that you've got a healthy group. You've got guys with something to prove. This has potential to just to bring that atmosphere back inside this building and get people really excited about it as they should be. Well, let's get after it tonight. The countdown to puck drop continues here. We're going uh, to finish up our uh, episode today and uh, then get up to the stands and watch this team do its thing tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you afterwards tonight. And uh, did we miss anything? Is there anything else you want to uh, give a final message to our viewers that I'm sure are going to be locked on this game tonight, whether they're here in person or watching on the tube? I and think of anything other than, again, make sure you check out Winnipeg Jets um, channels, whether it be social media, YouTube, the website, because we are going to be producing a lot of great content. And I look forward to a return visit here when we get to do food testing, because I'm just going to invite myself on. <laughs> done deal. I have you're, passes to get into you're the building in. now. You're you can't in. keep me out. <laughs> you're in on that, and uh, we will look forward to doing that very soon. And, and I'll tell you what, just honestly, I know there was a lot of people when – you know, they heard that you were leaving TSN. Everyone was so upset because, I mean, listeners and fans in this community have such a great connection with you from over the years. And uh, I think the Jet fans are going to be the lucky ones because uh, we're going to have all Sarah all the time beginning tonight right after Puck Drop tonight. So good luck with everything. Thank and you. good luck to everyone in the organization. And thanks to you and the team for uh, having us here for this exciting day to get the season going. Appreciate it. I hope this is the first of many times that you were here live during the season. Book it, Sarah. Thanks so much. There it is. Sarah Orleski tonight again. Post game, pretty much right after the uh, three stars tonight, Sarah and the Jets team will fire it up on the Jets channels. And uh, if you're at the game, or as I said, maybe checking out doing a few things other ways other afterwards it'll be there for you whenever you want to see it and now uh, we'll look forward to that throughout the year all right great stuff um what's the story with ken ken he's supposed to come on i sent him the link is oh, okay he, is well, he in here? well i mean i don't know i i, I can't see oh anything. he's in there so, oh he is there perfect perfect okay well listen he was probably waiting there for a while i apologize that sarah thanks so much for doing that all right i can't wait to talk to weaves world saw him this morning he's fired up for the season hey before we do that don't forget in the comments why not question of the day your last chance for hot takes and bold predictions on this season and they're not going anywhere if you do them after the show on the YouTube channel. So this is your chance to have them uh, there for eternity, for abuse if they were terrible takes, 
and for praise if they were great ones. Of course, not Autocorp. Our great friends and supporters are the spot to head. If you're looking for a new vehicle, Waverly and McGilvery, about 30 Teslas on the lot right now. They're the Tesla leaders in town. And talk to them about their Tesla experience program if you're thinking about moving to an electric vehicle. And uh, they've also got the Winnipeg Car Lab going right now, detailing service and more. Really, they have your one-stop shop for all things automotive. And if you're looking to upgrade your vehicle or get a new one, why not get into the car of your dreams at a great price with the help of the Knot team? Knot Auto Corp, Waverly, and McGilvery, and online at knot.ca. Hey, heading to the game tonight? Thinking about maybe upping your wardrobe? for the season royal sports is the spot to do that thousands of pieces of jets merchandise available for you and not just jets uh, bomber gear as well and your favorite teams for the nhl national football league major league baseball nba and tons of canada soccer gear as we get ready for canada returning to the world cup next month and of course royal is the hockey superstore have been for years all your hockey needs, right down to skate sharpening from the experts. Royal Sports, 750 Pemina Highway. Hit them up on Instagram as well. Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. And speaking of up in the wardrobe, your fan gear, Royal Sports. Your suits and whatnot, F Apparel. Andrew and the guys at F have been the leaders for custom suits for men starting just $400 for years. If you saw our suit show last week, celebrating a big milestone, our 400th show, and we were all geared up from Andrew. They even made us look good, if that's possible. Um, they've got a great deal right now. Buy one suit, get a second suit for 30% off. Great for folks that want a big wardrobe refresh or if you're wearing a suit each and every day. And a special for wedding parties as well. If you book your wedding party now and get measured up before the end of November, you'll get a 10% discount. And everyone in the party will get a free shirt that's a savings of up to $130 ahead. F Apparel, 190 Smith Street downtown. And online at F, that's ephapparel.com. All right, let's get to it and welcome in our guy, Kenny Weeb who joins us now after uh, a pop-in earlier today before the game. Weber, what's up? How are you? How's a uh, happy Friday to you? Uh, looking good uh, inside the sec. barn. One sec. Oh. I, I cannot hear Ken. We can't hear you, Ken. That's, that, is, that was me. That's, that's not, not a you. Ken thing. That's, that's not, not a Ken, Ken thing. thing. It's a very, Check one, two, one, two, one, two. There we go. We're back. We're back <laughs> with Ken Weeb. Uh, How's happy Friday, my man? Happy Friday. Looking good inside the barn. Uh, happy Friday. Like happy view. opening day. Puck dropping tonight. Uh, it was great to see you and the gang all here for game one of 82. And, of course, I'm also looking forward to not only Sarah after the game, but uh, you and the Ren Dog getting going again for uh, for Kenny and Rennie. Uh, everything, all systems go for tonight's game one and post-game <laughs> K&R. Please say yes. Yes, good news there, Huss. We did the uh, season preview uh, you know, on Wednesday after your show. Thanks for sending the uh, folks over. Uh, very well, very well watched uh, and listened to once again on the podcast front. Uh, yep, fantastic time of the year, Huss. We got playoff baseball. We got NFL, CFL, um, all, all of the things. Uh, we got banners being raised. We have all the small things being sung uh, in Colorado and uh, we're about to drop the puck on what should be a very intriguing season in the River City here. Uh, fill us in on what Bones had to say this morning. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm actually enjoying, uh, you know, I'm enjoying Rick. Uh, certainly, he's uh, very uh, talkative, very direct. Uh, he's definitely tired of talking about last season, and you can't blame him for that. He wasn't here, so... Uh, although lots of people understand that he's picking up the pieces. Uh, it's a new year. Uh, last year is in the proverbial rearview mirror for this group, other than trying to learn some of the lessons and maybe uh, some of that motivation and chip on their shoulder that Sarah mentioned uh, in the last segment. But uh, I think this team is going in in a very good headspace, Huss. They've, you know, they had about as good a preseason as you could have. That doesn't count for any points in the standings. But when you're looking at what this team had to do in terms of working on their structure, and sort of getting themselves into a good place. Uh, I think Rick Bonus and the coaching staff have done a great job. I think the players have been very uh, attentive throughout training camp. And now they're just at the point, like, let's be honest, these guys are just absolutely uh, chomping at the bit to get rolling here and get some real games being played and to stack up, see where you stack up. And boy, oh boy, the Rangers have uh, have come out of the cannon here, Huss, at 2-0, uh, putting up goals like they're going out of style. 
Uh, we expect to see Yaroslav Halak between the pipes uh, instead of Igor Shosturkin, the reigning Vesna Trophy winner. But uh, this is a tough team, and the Jets are going to have to be sharp out of the gate. Uh, the rest versus rust uh, will be te- will be put to the test right out of the gate here. Yeah, what do you make of this? I, I mean, we've been talking about it all week. It's such a bizarre way to start the season in that you know, the, the New York Rangers are playing their third game in four nights, uh, the second end of back-to-backs, whereas the Jets have been sitting around for a week while they were in, they haven't been here the whole time. They were in Banff, uh, but waiting to start. I mean, you'd have to think that this is maybe a bit of an advantage for the Jets just on the fact that they're probably not seeing Igor Shosturkin tonight. Um but they're going to need to get going and get to a pace right off the bat to match a team that has already have two games and two wins in the bank. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that the, uh, you know, shaking off the rust is something the Rangers have done. I mean, in terms of what's in the tank, I mean, that that's always tough to gauge. There should be plenty early in the season. Uh, and the fact that the game was a bit of a blowout yesterday against the Minnesota Wild, I think would lead you to believe that um, Gerard Gallant didn't have to lean as heavily on his top six players and maybe top defense pairing as he might have if it was a one goal game per se. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, the Jets uh, will have no shortage of energy coming out and they were very sharp to end the preseason. Now, does that carry over after a week break in between where you're only practicing? I mean, we'll only find out in a few hours. Uh, but what we do know, the Jets did dig in. They had two, two long, two, two hour practices basically in Banff where they did a lot of special teams work. That's the other thing, Huss. What we've seen this week in week one of the NHL season, outside of those global series games that were played, is that special teams are a massive factor going in the early going here. you got to be disciplined, and you have to be sharp when you have the man advantage. The Jets' power play was very sharp in the preseason. We expect it to be crisp again this evening, but that Rangers' power play looked pretty pretty filthy uh, early on in this uh, season as well, so... Uh, I don't think the Jets will have any trouble getting to pace, but it's the decisions with the puck. I think Rick Bonus talked about it this morning, us puck management against a team that's as fast and as opportunistic as, as the Rangers are, I think is a very critical key to this game this evening. Um, Ken, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get back to the top line. I want to ask you about your expectations for them this season and the power play, but um how do you expect the PK to be rolled out? I mean, we've seen a number of different looks so far in the preseason. And again, sometimes guys were in lineup, sometimes guys weren't. But we'd seen Blake Wheeler p- kill penalties. We'd even seen Mark Scheifele, Kyle Connor kill penalties. Um, how? Uh, who do you think will be the guys that the coach is going to be leaning on right out of the gate when it comes to uh, helping Connor Hellebuck kill two minutes? Yeah, I think Adam Lowry and Mason Appleton will be the top pairing on the penalty kill, Huss. And what we've seen a lot of is he wants to get that fourth line a little bit more involved. So that means David Gustafson and Saku Menelainen will be in the rotation. Uh, If they are rolling a third pairing through up front, uh, I think we will see Mark Scheifele take some draws on his strong side uh, in the defensive zone for penalties. I mean, Kyle Connor has been used on the penalty kill before as well and got some work this week in that role as well. Uh, we could see Blake Wheeler. I expect Wheeler's minutes to be primarily at five on five and with that second power play unit, but he is willing and able to kill penalties as well if called upon. Uh, that's the thing. I mean, Pierre-Luc Dubois is a guy too that sort of basically said he wants to be used in every single situation. Uh, Rick Bonus saying today he basically expects Dubois to be one of the best two-way centermen in the game this year. And that would be music to the ears of a guy who is highly motivated to have a great year after setting a career high for goals last year with 28 and being one off his career pace and points with 61. But overall, I mean, I expect the four to be used the most on the penalty kill. And, and then there'll be some kind of rotation uh, going with some of the skilled players uh, after that. Ken Weeb of Sportsnet. By the way, you know, I don't even know if we really talked about this, but get back to the team in a minute. Um, I meant to give you a official congratulations on the expanded role. And, uh, you know, we were just talking to Sarah about all the new stuff that the team is doing this year. Uh, I mean, we've always loved seeing you and Kent, uh, you and Rennie after the shows, but um, we're gonna. There's gonna be a lot more from you on the Sportsnet platforms for uh, for Jet fans starting tonight. Yeah, for sure, Huss. I mean, the, the biggest thing I guess that maybe some folks were not aware of. I was on a bit of a pitch count the last couple of years, where when I first started uh, in 2020 in the bubble, uh, you know, that was more full on. But the year after, it was more three columns a week, and then last year moved to sort of towards four columns a week. But uh, this year, we're going full blast, just like we used to at the Winnipeg Sun or at the Athletic when I was there. Uh, it will be frequent coverage and. 
Uh, we do have a, a, another special kind of uh, NHL view, Huss. Uh, this Sunday, I'll be launching my first uh, NHL around the NHL kind of news and notes column as well. So uh, definitely we'll, we'll, be, we'll be locked in on the Jets, but also going to be providing a little bit more of a, a broader view on the NHL as well. Obviously, we have we have writers in all of the Canadian markets, but uh, it'll be more of a view towards around the NHL and what's happening in some of those other markets as well. And uh, come playoff time, I expect to contribute to the Bombers coverage a little bit more as well. And uh, we'll probably get around to the uh, Winnipeg Ice Games a little bit here. Maybe watch Connor Bedard when he rolls through town as we have the uh, the Tankathon watch uh, for some teams as well. So uh, it's a super exciting time, Huss. Thanks for the support. And yeah, we did talk a little bit about it last week, but uh, nice to be able to dive in and Folks should know that uh, there will be a lot of coverage from from myself and Sean on on all the Sportsnet platforms as well, whether that be digital or TV. And for for myself, obviously, the writing on the .ca side. How much writing you think you're going to be doing on this top line <laughs> of Shifley, Connor, and Ehlers right now? I mean, listen. I mean, you know me. I'm optimistic. I'm fired up about the season. But honestly. It, I mean, there's a number of scenarios with this hockey club and with this line. It can go a number of different ways. But there's a best case scenario involving those three players and this hockey club that is, I think, incredibly exciting for Winnipeg Jet fans. Uh, how good can this unit be, Ken? Huss, they really can be one of the most electrifying and dynamic lines in the entire National Hockey League. And I'm not just saying that because we watch them the most. I mean... Uh, I've spoken to people around the league and they're like, whoa, those three guys are playing together. The, the skill sets are just so dynamic. Huss. You have three guys that are excellent trigger men. They can all shoot the puck extremely well, incredibly quick releases, uh, especially from Connor and Shifley. And Nick Eilers is a sneaky quick release as well. Uh, they all have excellent vision. They all have really good passing abilities and their ability to score in transition is absolutely dynamite. Huss. So, it's interesting. I was listening to the Flames broadcast yesterday uh, for their season opener against Colorado. And I think that uh, Peter Labardi is mentioning that the Flames top line, which was considered to be one of the top, if not the best line in the NHL last year, I think the trio combined for, it was either 111 or 114 goals um, between Goudreau, Kachuk and Lindholm. So, I mean, honestly, I think that is a reasonable expectation for the Jets top trio as well, if they're all able to stay healthy and remain together. And when I was talking with Kyle Connor in Banff earlier this week, Huss, he did say the one thing that is really exciting for him is that he's not expecting the blender to be in operation quite as often as the last couple of years. Uh, he's expecting those guys to get a long leash when it comes to how they're going to mesh together. Rick Bonus even saying it today, you need you know, 15, 20 games before you get a really good feel for what that line looks like. We know that Bonus leaned on his top line last year when it came to hints uh, Pavelski and Robertson, and we expect him to kind of lean on these th this Jets top line as well. But the beauty for the Jets is that they they still have a second line that should be highly productive, and you have a motivated third line with Adam Lowry, Mason Appleton, and Morgan Barron, uh, Barron becoming a full time NHLer for the first time, if he's able to stick as we expect he will. Both Appleton and Lowry are looking to contribute a little bit more on the offensive side, and for a team that needs complementary offense. Uh, that would be good news for the Jets if they're able to hit those marks. Like we know that Lowry had a great second half and now he's going to be fired up to try to make it a full season where he's a, you know, double digit goal scorer again, uh, especially as he leans into this leadership role, which again is highly, you know, it, it's time for Adam Lowry. He's been a leader on this team. And I think it was a smart choice by Rick, uh, sorry, Rick bonus to make that choice and adding him to the leadership group. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that we didn't see Nikolai Ehlers wear an A during the preseason at all, but Nikolai would fall into that category of guys who doesn't necessarily need a letter to lead. Well, and his, and his comments that. yesterday, Kenny, his comments yesterday were interesting because he was asked, mm -hmm. I mean, how did he make this choice? He said, well, Adam Lowry, Lowry already was a big leader, and I agree. I mean, I kind of said that he was the de facto bridge, if you will, in yep. that locker room from some of the veterans to the younger guys. Um but he was pretty clear. His leadership group, to quote Rick Bonus, is the room. Everyone is part of it right now. And, and honestly, that's something that we had been talking about that was needed in this group for a long time. So um, Blake Wheeler's still going to be a big part of, you know, leading the way. He's not going to have an A on his jersey. And, you know, whether it's Kyle Connor or Nikolai Ehlers or a Brendan Dillon, um, it really does seem like they are trying to 
bring everybody together and have everyone on that same footing and same level that um, certainly, for my opinion, has not been the case the last few years under previous coaching staffs. And to be honest, it's refreshing, and I think that'll be invigorating for a lot of players that you know have wanted to be more part of the solution. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm glad you brought up Brendan Dillon because Huss, I mean, I think he was part of both San Jose teams that changed captains, right? Whether it was whether it was Patrick Marlowe or Joe Thornton, I'm pretty sure he was there throughout that entire tenure. So he would know what a team looks like when it evolves in that leadership front. And he would know how guys step up and act accordingly. I mean, I thought one thing that stood out from the trip to Banff as well, Huss, Nate Schmidt kind of pointing out that I mean, a guy that we don't really talk about a lot in terms of leadership, but Connor Hellebuck is a guy who has kind of embraced this almost Roberto Luongo role. It's not like he's the unofficial captain or anything, but he's definitely a guy who isn't afraid to have his voice heard. And he obviously is a very hardworking guy, both in terms of practices and in terms of the workload that he carries between the pipes as one of the elite goalies in the National Hockey League. But I mean, Brendan has seen guys emerge and he's seen guys like Kyle Connor stepping up. So uh, I, I think that the Jets are in a good place right now. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, another thing we heard from Adam Lowry today about how, you know, graceful Blake Wheeler has handled this situation, which obviously would have been tough on him. Uh, there's no doubt. We know that, you know, he said he's had time to process it and everything else. But, I mean, I think that he's still going to be an important member of this Winnipeg Jets team. I mean, he's, he's, his minutes will be reduced slightly. Uh, and I know a lot of people are, you know, up in arms, not up in arms, but kind of, make it a big deal. The fact that he is no longer on the first power play unit. I mean, that just goes to show you that they're trying to spread the wealth a little bit. And it also tells you that Nikolai Ehlers, it's his time to get an opportunity on that first unit as well. And nothing set in stone, but uh, Huss, we know it's prediction time around these times. And I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident in saying, I don't expect Blake Wheeler to go 19 or 20 games without scoring his first goal. Uh, I expect him to have an impact right out of the gate with this Winnipeg Jets hockey team. And I think that he's really going to be a nice, a piece to play with Pierre-Luc Dubois and the youngster Cole Perfetti, who, you know, by many calculations, I mean, is a guy who could find himself in the Calder Trophy conversation, uh, depending on what his production is like. But he's definitely going to have opportunity, and we know he's going to be leaned on by Rick Bonus and this coaching staff to to be a productive player on the top among the top six. Oh, I mean, you you nailed it there. I mean, Cole Perfetti. I'm not sure that there's another rookie in the league that is never mind having the opportunity um, to play score to have a big contribution in his rookie year um but never mind the opportunity he's going to be leaned on for exactly that and you know that line is so fascinating ken when you think about the offseason storylines um you know perfetti coming back from injury dubois his future here what happened with the you know his agent and, and all of that people wondering where he was at he seems to be dialed in has been in great spirits and then of course blake wheeler and uh you know, you lose the C. I mean, I think that was a bit of a humbling moment for Blake. And by all accounts, he's handled it very well. And if people have not seen Sean Reynolds' interview with Blake, um, I saw it off of a, a link off Sean's Twitter, so you can see that, or I'm sure it's on at Sportsnet on the site somewhere. Um, you know, I, I don't know what your take was on that. I mean, I think Blake was still somewhat guarded. I don't know if it's an easy thing to be talking about, but I mean, credit to him for doing it, getting away, and... I think this will really be in the rear view very quickly this season. Um, just your thoughts on Wheeler's position as an important player of the team, but also in a little bit of a different role and what that might hopefully be able to do for him on a positive side. Yeah, so we've been talking about this for a couple of months, even before the, the move is made uh, in terms of the captaincy. So, I mean, Blake Wheeler is still a very important player on this team. And I think, when I said earlier that his minutes might be shaved a little bit, I mean, Rick Bonus talked about that earlier this week, how you can't constantly be riding your top horses uh, constantly to be playing 22 to 24 minutes, because then you get to, you get to March and April and they don't have much left in the tank. I actually think that if Wheeler's minutes are reduced slightly, it will help him optimize his usage and his ability to produce and continue to be a productive player. I mean, we know he's been one of the most productive distributors and dishers and assist uh, you know, creators on the power play over the course of these years, but playing with a guy like Pierre-Luc Dubois, who's so dogged down low below the goal lines and gets to the net so well. And then when you play with another guy with vision, like Cole Perfetti, who sees the ice so well and has an underrated shot, I still think that Blake Wheeler can be a, a highly productive player. I mean, whether that number is, you know, somewhere between 55 and 70 points, 
I mean, remains to be seen depending on uh, usage and power play numbers that the second unit may get when they get onto the ice. But I don't think that Blake Wheeler's production is going to fall off a cliff by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he's been a, you know, a guy who can score goals. He's really good at passing the puck as well. I expect him to still get a solid amount of points for this team. And the big thing too, I mean, Rick Bonus said it very early in training camp. Blake Wheeler's still a six foot five guy that gets around the ice pretty well. He's playing with Pierre Luc Dubois, who is kind of wonder one of those underrated strength kind of guys uh, that is really hard to play against. I mean, that's going to open up all kinds of space for Perfetti in terms of his production as well. But yeah, Blake Blake said it himself. I mean, the day that he met the media after the official announcement was made about the captaincy. If you expect him to just kind of fade into the shadows, I mean, I think he's got a pretty big body of work that would suggest otherwise, Huss. And uh, I don't, I'm not anticipate that happening uh, this year. That's for sure. I don't think that he's going to just slip into the, into the slip off into the sunset here. I expect him to be an important contributor on this team, and they need him to be an important contributor because if you're in the top six, you need to contribute. That it's that simple. Ken Weaver of Sportsnet with us here. Weaver, our no, why not question of the day today was sort of a last call for hot takes and bold <laughs> predictions. And uh, I've got one for you. Adam Lowry has a career year. He meets or beats his best season, uh, his uh, career best of 15 goals and gets 30 or more points in a very important role, both at five on five and on special teams. What do you think about that? Your thought on Lowry for this season, as well as the guys starting the year on his wings, Mason Appleton and Barron. Yeah, no doubt, Huss. Uh, I would I would take the over on uh, on the thirty points for Adam Lowry as well. I think that uh, although he you know would have done his best to handle the situation, I think you know he admitted himself that last year, uh, you know, when Dave took over, there was a little bit of a strain. Uh, you know, it was a tough, tough thing to go through as a player. I mean, I'm sure it was a great moment for the family and everything else. It'll be something that you look back on in your career and say it was pretty neat to be able to have that experience. But uh, I think that Adam is going to, you know, go to new heights this year. I think we've seen how Rick Bonus has used his checking line. I think you're going to see uh, Lowry up against Mika Zibanejad often this evening in the in the opener. I think he's going to relish that kind of a role and. And one thing we know, there, there are a lot of top top end centermen who don't like to defend. And when that happens, that means checking lines are able to you know, generate some opportunities for themselves and convert. So uh, I do think that, you know, 15 goals is a high number to hit. I mean, I think that Adam Lowry is a guy who has produced uh, offensively, whether it was at the Western Hockey League level or, you know, being a double digit guy here. Uh, I do think they need that line to contribute a little bit more. I do think we're going to see a a version of Mason Appleton, which is similar to the one we saw during the North division slash Canadian division a couple of years back when I think it was 13 goals in 56 games. Uh, you know, can he have an 18 to 20 goal pace? I'm not sure, but he certainly can produce in that, you know, 13 to 16 range there where we saw Brandon Tanev at the end of his tenure with the Jets before he cashed in with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, Morgan Barron, I mean, it's up to, it's up to him. I mean, can he be a 10, 10, 10 to 14 goal guy? I mean, We've seen his hands at work at times in a small sample size. All three of those guys are capable players. There's no doubt about that. So I do think that that third line is going to be more productive than it was for the majority of last season. And we know right out of the gate, Huss, they will not be struggling with identity. I mean, Christian Veselainen is a guy who basically got a long, long opportunity on that line last year. It just never happened for him in terms of his awesome offensive production. And that's going to have to change this year. And if, and if those guys can't produce offensively, then other guys will be given the opportunity because I do see an opportunity for the fourth line to contribute a little bit more offense to us uh, in David Gustafson, Sam Gagne, and Seku Menelainen. And then we'll see what happens and where, you know, Axel Janssen Fialbi fits in to this whole mix once he gets a little bit more settled here after being claimed off waivers. Yeah, well, you mentioned Morgan Barron. I will be doing the cool bet lines in a minute, but we were talking about it, and I forgot. We have a revenge game narrative here going into this <laughs> one, so I'm just looking at plus 295 for a Morgan Barron goal, and it won't be against Shesterkin. It'll be against Halak, so it might be something for us to think about. And speaking of those cool bet lines, I did ask the bookies to get me a number on an over-under goal total for the Jets' top line of Kyle Connor, Nikolai Ehlers, and Mark Shifley. And I was sort of stunned at how high it was just because of the numbers that you rolled out, 106 and a half. Um, that being said, 
We talked about the potential of this line. I think Billick was putting up some numbers that thought they could push 120. Well, listen, if we're talking about them anywhere in that neighborhood, that's going to be a very exciting season and be very, very good for the Winnipeg Jets. But at the other end, you mentioned David Gustafson, Saku Menelainen, and Sam Gagne as the Jets' fourth line. Um, I'm interested... In, we talked a lot about the fourth line needing to get out there a little bit more. Do you think that happens right out the gate? Is that something that they will earn the confidence of the coach and get out more? And um, Gagne in particular, who I think has a real versatility to his game, um, do you think he spends most of the time on that fourth line? Or is will he be a guy that can be somewhat of the uh, the old jumper cables that can move <laughs> yeah. up and down the lineup when, uh, when this uh, scenario is not called for it? Yeah, no doubt, Huss. I mean, Sam Gagne could be sliding right into the Matthew Perot human jumper jumper cables role this year. Uh, he could jump up into the mix and, and fill in if a line needs a spark at any time, no doubt about that. I do think that Gagne's ability to play on the power play on that second unit, he's a great distributor, and he can also shoot it. Uh, I do expect him to, you know, to play a big role there on that unit. Uh, and again, Rick Bonus, I asked him about it about yet, you know, about it yesterday about the fourth line and, and what his his expectations are. And he did say he he wants to get that fourth line out for somewhere in that eight to ten minute range, and you know whether that comes with the bulk of those minutes at even strength or on the penalty kill with Menelainen and Gustafsson, you know we would expect that to be a factor. But you don't want those guys you know spending three minutes on the penalty kill because it means there's been a parade to the penalty box. But I do think right out of the gate, the Jets will not be hesitant to play that fourth line. And Rick Bonus did say, I mean, obviously, if they're chasing the game and they need offense, you know, the fourth line is probably not going to play as much. But I don't see the days happening of, you know, the fourth line being down at the, you know, four to six minute range. I just don't see that being uh, something that's going to be happening as often this year because of the trust factor and because of the maturity factor. I mean, people don't know much about Sacramento line. And, but this guy's 28 years old. Huss. He's not a kid. You know, David Gustafson is a seasoned professional, uh, even though he's going to just basically be getting his first long look and audition as a fourth line center at the NHL level. And obviously Sam Gagne is 33 away from a thousand. So like, I don't think he's going to be hesitant playing these guys in matchups. Obviously the Rangers will be looking to play their fourth line a little bit more today, given that it's a back-to-back -back scenario for them. And then they just have to make sure they're not just treading water. They got to create some offense and make sure they're not giving up too much. But I do expect that we'll see, you know, if the if the over under is eight minutes on the fourth line today, I would take the over on that one as well. All right, uh, I see Tinder XYZ's popped in. That means <laughs> that people are out right now. We've got over five hundred in the chat right now, folks. If you haven't already, make sure you've hit that red subscribe button. Uh, helps us spread the channel and uh, certainly gets the most r uh, recent. WST content in your feed whenever you're popping back to YouTube. Subscribe on the podcast wherever you are. And I'm seeing what you guys are saying in chat. We'll agree to it. If you get the 300 likes by the end of this program and the end of this marble race, we'll do another suit show coming up very soon. We've got the duds from F Apparel, so we'll, uh, we're able to do that. So get on that. <laughs> and uh, plus three, 300 likes, just hit that thumbs up. It's very easy. It's another thing that certainly helps us spread the channel. Um, Okay, let's get to the blue line before we finish up. Logan Stanley was the guy that, um, you know, is that sixth defenseman today on opening night. Well, I know we've talked pretty, even just in the last three weeks. Is it Vili Hainala? Is it Dylan Sandberg? Where does Logan Stanley fit? And it seemed like, I, I personally, I don't know whether you disagree. I didn't think Stanley had a great start to the preseason. Um, he obviously did some things that caught Rick Bonus's eye. Why do you think Stan is the man that gets the call in game number one? And what does Logan Stanley have to do to stay in the lineup, in your opinion? Yeah, he needs to be a, a physical force while not chasing hits. Huss. I mean, that can sometimes be a challenging thing to do. And Rick Bonus referenced that right out of the gate. I mean, we know that Logan Stanley's first shift of the preseason was a disastrous one where uh, Mystic Pizza ended up in the back of the net immediately. Uh, that's, <laughs> Mystic that's, Pizza. That's, that's, that's never a way anyone wants to start. Uh, he finished that game with 10 hits. He was running around a little bit too much trying to find it. But uh, the Jets are looking for a little bit of a different type of player. They're looking for a penalty-killing guy, a guy that can clear the front of the net, and a guy that leans in on the, maybe the physical nature side of things. Um, you know, to keep the job, you got to be effective, Huss. I mean, I've said this to you before. I mean, I haven't asked Rick Bonus directly, but I have to believe that he sees some qualities in Logan Stanley that he saw in Jamie Alexiak. I would say Jamie is a much more... Uh, you know, well-rounded player and a more physical player, but 
he went through some of those growing pains as a member of the Dallas Stars and Rick would have been involved in his development. So I think he sees some potential there. I mean, obviously Logan Stanley had a tough year last year, us, and he needs to play better. And if he doesn't play better, he won't be in the lineup. I mean, it's basically that simple because the Jets have alternatives at their disposal. And, you know, one of them being Dylan Sandberg on the roster, Kyle Capabianco, obviously a different style of player. And we know that Billy Hanela, even though he's been sent to the minors, it doesn't mean he's been banished and that's where he's going to be staying. I mean, Billy Hanela's job right now is to give the Jets no other choice but to find a way to get him into the lineup if an opportunity presents itself. But in terms of Logan Stanley, he, you know, how long the leash will be, we're not sure. But I would say that he's going, it's incumbent upon him to have a strong start. If he doesn't have a strong start, then changes will be made. I mean, I think Rick Bonus has shown that he's not afraid to make changes. We've, we've mentioned many of those already. Um, Logan Stanley gets the first crack at it, and we'll see how he handles handles the situation because he's not in a position to be complacent, Husk. There is competition behind him, and I would even say there's competition among the group. I mean, you know, Nate Schmidt's going to start the year in the third pairing. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of guys who want to play well, and they want to have a lot of minutes. So, this group is kind of on high alert. The veterans have done their part, and now we'll see if Logan can keep the job. Just because he has a leg up doesn't mean you keep the job for X amount of games. I mean, this is an open competition. It's ongoing, and it still involves people that aren't on the NHL roster right now. Kenny, before we go, our focus is all on tonight and dropping the puck on jet season, but uh, i got to tell you, I'm looking forward to getting down to the rink tomorrow afternoon and seeing this Manitoba Moose Club. I mean, just a quick thought on the roster of the Moose. And speaking of competition, I mean, competition of guys that had great years last year in Manitoba that all of a sudden find Chaz Lucius, Brad Lambert, Jansen Harkins, Dominic Toninato amongst the group. That'll uh, drop the puck for the antlered ones tomorrow. Yeah, it's an exciting time for the Manitoba Moose. I mean, we talked about how strong their defense will be in terms of the prospects, the high-end prospects, and some of the more veteran guys. I mean, Jacqueline Chisholm is a guy I know he got sent back early. I mean, he's still a guy who, to me, projects incredibly well and, you know, will be pushing for a roster spot sooner than later as well, Huss. I mean, Brad Lambert getting the contract signed and that situation taken care of would be a breath of fresh air and maybe a big relief in some ways. I think they always expected it to get done, but that's something where, Obviously, we talked about this from the very beginning, Huss. The agent was grinding over bonuses. He got those performance bonuses in years two and three. And now it's up to Brad Lambert to show incredibly well and to earn all of those bonuses through his performance. I think there'll be a massive opportunity for some of those young guys to really shine. Uh, there's some nice insulation for them in terms of the veterans who are around those players and will help them develop. And you got a bunch of people that are hungry, uh, Huss. I mean, whether it's you know, Jeff Malott, Mikey Asimont, you know, Kevin Stenland is going to play a big role down there uh, as well. And Christian Reichel, I mean, this is a guy who got his first taste last year. So uh, this is a team that has a lot of excitement around them. I think there's a lot of excitement around the goaltending tandem of Holm and Salmanen as well. Uh, this is going to be a fun, fun year for Mark Morrison and his coaching staff at the Moose. And there are a lot of guys who are already on the periphery and on the, on the radar and, you know, there's a lot of internal motivation for them as well, both in terms of battling for ice time at the American League level and sort of uh, jockeying for position for those call-ups when, uh, when injuries are bound to hit. Ken, great stuff. Uh, folks, I mean, I'm sure most of our listeners and viewers, especially on YouTube, are already familiar with the laughs, analysis, and hijinks of you and Sean Reynolds after the game. But if somehow people were not aware uh, we got KNR one of 82 tonight post game. Fill people in on uh, what you and Rennie have coming up after the game. Yeah, thanks for that, Huss. Uh, yeah, we always love when you join us, and uh, we know that we you can find us on our YouTube channel. And if you miss it tonight, you can catch it uh, on the weekend. There's not another game until Monday against Dallas, so uh, check it out on our YouTube channel or wherever you get your favorite uh, podcast. Just uh, search the Kenny and Rennie Show. And it will pop up for you if you need other uh, assistance. Uh, go to my YouTube feed and or uh, my uh, Twitter feed, if you will, uh, at Weebs World, and uh, we'll we'll set you up and get you pointed in the right direction there as well. Ken, thanks for doing this, man. Great to see you this morning. We'll see you tonight, and uh, we'll definitely see you and Ren after the game on KNR. Thanks for doing this, buddy. My pleasure, Huss. And uh, one quick one. Uh, tough week for a lot of folks uh, in Winnipeg there. Uh, R.I.P. Zach Hirschman, uh, wow. one of the great uh, human beings around. And I uh, just wanted to 
quickly shout uh, shout out Zach. We're thinking of uh, his family uh, during what is an incredibly difficult time here. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Zach was a great friend of uh, many of us and um, just suddenly and tragically passed earlier this week. And it was a big, big part of the basketball community here in Manitoba, former Bison player. And uh, just at the end of the day, just a hell of a dude. And uh, it's uh, absolutely tragic. And uh, yeah, definitely thinking about uh, his children his family right now and uh, all of his close friends. Kenny, thanks for doing this, man. We'll see you tonight at the game. Take care, Huss. Enjoy the tilt and have a great weekend. You man. got Thank it. You. At Weaves World on Twitter and, of course, expanded Jets coverage now on Sportsnet. Now that Ken is in the fold, grinding full time, check it out, sportsnet.ca, for the latest of uh, Ken's um, contributions and writings on the Winnipeg Jets and, of course, k after the show. All right, Bombers tomorrow. And... Um, uh, Darren bombing. We were good at uh, just with it being down here for the home opener. Hacksaw's coming down. We weren't going to do it a, a, a bomber segment. Obviously, we've been talking about Drew Brown getting the start all week long. Uh, but DB is going to be firing it up on bonfire right after Winnipeg Sports Talk. So make sure you tune in to Darren for the latest on the Bombers, who, again, will be resting some regulars tomorrow, taking on the BC Lions on that late-night game. And, of course, we'll have the latest on the Bombers on Monday when we get back after the weekend. When we talk Bombers, we do it for our friends at Princess Auto. Don't forget the Princess Auto tailgate zone before the game for the final regular season game against BC. And, of course, you better make be making plans not only to get to the Western final uh, coming up on November 13th, Get your tickets today, by the way. I do know the uh, tickets went on sale this morning at 10, so don't wait for those. That is going to be if it's anything like last year. I don't think it can get much better, uh, but it'll all be happening before the game in the Princess Auto tailgate zone, and then when the kickoff, Princess Auto, great sponsors of Winnipeg Sports Talk, the Bombers, and the place where you'll find the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Visit them one of their two Winnipeg locations or shop online 24-7, 365. Uh, the gang at Culligan Water have been such wonderful sponsors of ours and uh, doing a pretty important job for 65 years as a family-owned business here in Manitoba. That is taking care of Manitobans with all of their water products and water services. And they do have it all. Water softeners, filters, bottled water coolers, whole home systems and drinking water systems, citywide water delivery services, as well as commercial and industrial water products and solutions. The Culligan Man has you covered. Pop down and see them. 1200 Sergeant Avenue. You can give them a call at 694-5180 and online at drinkculligan.com. Hey, the weekend's here. Very busy weekend. Watching the Jets, watching the Moose. We got football, Bombers tomorrow night, NFL on Sunday. Uh, if you haven't already, might be a nice little addition a little bit of Canadian Club. And, of course, Canada's favorite whiskey, Canadian Club, is the official sponsor of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So you can get that at all IG Field events. In addition to the new ready-to-drink CC and ginger ale cocktail, which is not only available at the IG Field, but also at your local beer store in six packs in cans. Uh, if you haven't tried it already, it's phenomenal and it ain't going anywhere. Pick it up today. And of course, you can get all the Canadian Club products at your local Manitoba Liquor Mart. And uh, hey, got to give a shout out to my friend Crystal down at the Boston Pizza at uh, downtown, where we uh, always used to do our pregame shows back at the old station. Great spot after the game and before the game as well. And, hey, never mind the games this weekend. When we're talking NFL football, BP is the place to go. Right, delicious pizza flights by draft on special. And your chance to win one of two grand prize trips to Vegas to see the Raiders and a bonus NHL game. First game, uh, first weekend is coming up less than a month away, November 11th to 13th. Uh, and then, of course, the New Year's weekend with a Raider game and New Year's Eve with the Vegas Golden Knights. Watch the NFL and win at any Selkirk, Portage, Morden, Boston, win, of course, all the Winnipeg and Selkirk, Boston pizza locations. All right. Uh, we are going to open up the marble race a little early today because we do have a quick turnaround We've got to get the podcast posted. We've got to get up. We've got to leave. We've got to come back to the game. So, um, Remo, if you want right now, let's open it up. Uh, we will, as soon as you see folks in the chat, 
um, the direction. And for those of you that are new, by the way, you've come at the right time. This is uh, Friday afternoon on Winnipeg Sports Talk. We're going to talk NFL with Hacksaw, and we're going to get going for the marble race. Um, so when you see the prompt in the chat, just put in exclamation mark marbles. We'll do a last call when we're finished with Hacksaw, but we're going to turn this around pretty quickly uh, because we do have lots to get to before the end of the program. But I do think uh, always a guest of honor on WST <laughs> is the one and only Lee Hacksaw Hamilton, who joins us now and saw, as you can see, a little bit of a different uh, different background today because we're live inside Canada Life Center getting ready for the Jets to drop the puck on their season against the New York Rangers. Your Ducks have already been in action so far. Uh, before we get to football, have you paid attention to the start of NHL season yet? I have. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm do uh, nice doing great. You on remote. Uh, uh, yeah, I love hockey, cover hockey here in Southern California, probably more than anybody else does. I'll guarantee you that. Um, it's, it's interesting. The, the LA Kings and Rob Blake have done a fast turnaround in its rebuild. I think the addition of Kevin Fiala from Minnesota is intriguing because he did score 35 goals last season. I think the Kings have a real good cross section of, of veterans who can score and some young guys that are developing. I think the big storyline in L.A. is how quickly does Quentin Byfield, the number one draft pick, the teenage center, arrive in the NHL and, and contribute in the NHL. He is on their opening day roster. The Ducks have new leadership with Pat Verbeek. Obviously, it's transition. They've gotten rid of a lot of players. They got rid of a lot of contracts. I don't know where all the goal scoring is going to come from, but that being said, they play hard for Dallas Aikens, the head coach. They came from behind. They beat Seattle the other night in a phenomenal emotional game in Anaheim you would have thought it was an NHL playoff game with 17,000 people going crazy they got John Gibson they think they've upgraded the defense in front of John Gibson now they just need to find which guys uh, led by Troy Terry are going to be able to score goals to complement the goaltending and the defense I don't know that the Ducks are a playoff team the Kings obviously got to the playoffs so they're feeling good about the Rob Blake rebuild there and you I, you know, Kenny was just talking about Manitoba Moose, uh, our American Hockey League team here in San Diego, which draws huge crowds, has had only one one substandard season in seven years. They open tonight on the road in Grand Rapids, and they've loaded their roster with a bunch of AHL veterans who've had tastes of the NHL, including next Winnipeg Jet guy, Chase DeLeo. So fascinated to see what our minor league team has here. So, yeah, I like hockey. and. My Maple Leafs lost on opening night to my wife's Montreal Canadiens. Again. So what? all is not well in our house right now. Thank what? you. What? How's that for breaking news? Hacksaw admitting to being a Leaf fan live on Winnipeg Sports Talk today. We are shocked. Wait a minute. Leaf. Let me interject here, loudmouth. I am representing. No, that's more like it. That's more like it. Okay. Get on board with the Jets, not the Leafs. We're playing the next Saturday right here. This is good. Next Friday's visit should be very, very special. Hey, serious question. You don't though. want to argue with me because I'm a talk show host. You <laughs> I, lose. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I, 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 I should pick my battles a little bit better. But that is... That is something that I will bring the passion on, as will everybody in our chat. I can guarantee you about that. Um, Lee, quickly, though, on the Ducks. And by the way, I'm glad you shouted out Chase to Lee. He was such a great member of the organization while he was here. And pretty cool to see a young kid from Southern California get a chance to play near friends and family. But I wanted to ask you just quickly about Dallas Akins. He's one of a very few number of coaches. I believe it's three, maybe four in the league that does not have a contract for next year. And, um, you know, they picked up his option for this year. And I think Pat Verbeek probably is, you know, trying to see how things work and move forward. But I guess the question is, what do you think Dallas has to do to earn an extension and stay on this season with the Ducks past this year? He's done a good job in a really tough circumstance. You know, he was hired by Bob Murray. Murray got fired uh, because of a lot of personal problems. Uh, Dallas, I will say this, he had a great career coaching in the American Hockey League the first time around, uh, Toronto Marlies and other places, wound up going to Edmonton in an absolute I can't win situation. They had no goaltending. They had all these 18 and 19 year old guys and said, play them and let's see what happens. Well, they didn't win. And he got tossed overboard after about a year and a half, came down here, was hired by the San Diego Gulls through the Anaheim Ducks affiliation did a mystical job with what was uh, a, an expansion franchise from day one, never had a losing, losing season. 
Um, I, I talked to a lot of hockey players and, and I've been around hockey guys for my whole career and players just raved about his ability to communicate, not just X's and O's and playing, but the X's and O's in life. And he said, this coach made every one of us a much better person because he told us what life was all about and how we had to act on the ice, but how we had to develop our life off the ice. And players just raved about him. And he went in a tough situation with the Ducks because they were in transition with aging players and big contracts and not a lot of young guys who had produced. And he's kept them competitive. So I think if they can, if they can be above 500 this season, and maybe be in the playoff race for a while. I, I think he probably gets an extension, but this is more of an organizational issue that the, the Ducks have just by virtue of the fact that they've been down cycle for so long. They had had that really nice run and then it just all got away from them. And then they did not make the playoffs. And when they made the playoffs, they lost on home ice. It was really just a tough, tough situation. So I'm a big Dallas Aikens fan, just as how he delivers the message to players to be pros on the ice, but to be pros in your personal life. I, I think he's one of the most unique guys that I've ever, ever crossed paths with. Lee Haxa Hamilton's with us here on Winnipeg Sports Talk as we get ready for the Jets home opener tonight, live right here at Canada Life Center. Um, talked a little puck, Lee, and lots of time all winter to do that. Let's get to the National Football League, though. And listen, a couple weeks ago, it was that horrible scene with Tua uh, on the Thursday night game, just five days after being knocked out of the game before. And it seems like it's manifested itself in a couple ways. Uh, Mid-season, they seem to have sort of changed the concussion protocol. And then on top of it all, I'm not sure whether I'm stretching this too much. I think there has been, you know, some crazy roughing the passer penalties that I'm not sure would have been called before. How tied in is all of that right now? And and what is the continued reverberations from the Tua injury when it comes to the National Football League, brain injuries, and player safety? Well, there's, there's a lot to unwrap here. The NFL holds its owners' meetings on Tuesday. The competition committee is going to meet. And they're going to evaluate what's happened in the NFL this season compared to what's happened in the past. Andrew, uh, there have been 13 quarterbacks knocked out of action in five weeks five weeks. Uh, now, it's weird because there are a lot less roughing the passer calls in the first five weeks, only 29 flags compared to what we had last year. Uh, but we've seen some different things develop. We're still getting big hits on quarterbacks. But what we've seen happen is this, this mentality of defensive players that I can grab that quarterback and I can slingshot him head first into the turf. We've had three different injuries from guys who were not only hit, but were grabbed and then flipped face first, helmet first into the turf. Uh, there's a huge issue now as to what the league should do. The league is going to evaluate the idea that maybe we should have instant replay in the video booth at each stadium in which the sky guy, the sky judge, would deem, was that a roughing the passer penalty? Should there be a penalty flag thrown? It would involve late hits, head hits, blows to the knees, pancake hits which we started to see more and the flinging incidents which i've never seen up until this year so the league is under a lot of pressure to continue to protect these guys uh it's interesting andy reed came out of the monday night game after the mess with Derek carr and said hey you got to protect my quarterback but b my guy's got to be able to make football plays too you know i'm referencing the chris jones sack caused fumble fumble recovery, pancake of Derek Carr. It's a very complex issue. I don't know if the league next week will invoke use of video replay. They hardly ever make rule changes in midstream. But you got too many quarterbacks getting getting blown up with savage hits, you know, and obviously two is one. Miami's lost two quarterbacks. Jets lost two quarterbacks. It's just not a good situation in the league. But uh, as Andy Reid said, protect my guy, but my guy's got to play football too. <laughs> Uh, Lee, I wanted to ask you about the Dan Snyder situation, which has sort of bubbled up again, and uh, I'll put it in context. Now, listen, I'm not too sure how many people put themselves through the three hours of last night's game between the Washington Cam Commanders and the Chicago Bears. That was... That's that, kind of like root canal surgery. <laughs> that's, that's pretty damn close. However, I bring it up because later on in the game, Al Michaels said something that caught me off guard that you never hear a broadcaster say, 
especially around an NFL broadcast. And maybe Al just has so much stroke, he can say exactly what he feels. But he basically said the best thing for the NFL, what people within the NFL wanted, was for Daniel Snyder just to sell the team. Um, There's more that's come out behind this. I think that has been a feeling for a long time, probably right to the top of Roger Goodell. But um, why do you think Al Michaels, who is so confident in publicly slamming an owner of a player, of a, a guy that owns the team that's playing in that game, seems like there's a lot happening behind the scenes that involves the owner of the Washington Commanders? Well, there's two, there's two issues here. Daniel Snyder's ownership of a team that's really fallen on bad times because of the decisions that he has forced his football people to make. That's one the other thing is his business life and all the toxic culture lawsuits and the, the congressional hearings and the NFL investigations and the allegations of a cover up because they won't make public what they found. And the, the Bruce Allen firing and the email scandal with John Gruden, it's all swirls around all the different executives that worked under Dan Snyder. So there's two different things here in play. You know, and then the ESPN essay that came out yesterday from their two investigative reporters anonymously quoting Daniel Snyder as saying, I've got enough dirt to blow up all these owners in the NFL, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. It may well be that's who he is and that's how he acts and that's the way he conducts his business. They need 24 votes to remove him. I don't think this is going to be discussed uh, at the Tuesday ownership meeting, but it's obviously a black eye on the National Football League, not just that it's a bad Washington commander's product, but just this guy's method of doing business just seems to be so offensive at this point in time. You know, at one point they had a 90,000 seat stadium, FedEx Field. Uh, they reduced the capacity to 62,000. They have the lowest attendance in the league. At one point, Hustler, they had a waiting line around the block for people that wanted to buy season tickets. Now they can't give away season tickets because fans are up in arms over the sky. And he's lost a lot of his corporate sponsors. Um, if he were ever fully implicated, if he had fingerprints on a whole bunch of things with the sexual misconduct thing, and all of the sponsors at FedEx Field vacated, he would be forced to sell the franchise. But as long as he's making this kind of money and nothing has actually been delivered to him aside from the suspension and the $10 million fine, now, if, the, if, the, if there's another series of incidents, then I think he could be removed. In terms of his threats that I got dirt on you and I'll get you publicly, if it is, it is, and we'll see where it goes from there. But it's a bad scene. It's a, just a terrible scene. And Ron Rivera is trying to coach through all this negativity and this adversity and this garbage upstairs and the garbage on the business side of the operation. I feel bad for Ron Rivera. He used to coach out here with the San Diego Chargers. He's a good guy in what might be the worst situation in the NFL. Uh, folks, uh, this is great stuff with Lee. we got a couple minutes left. We're going to get to the games. I see we're getting close to 300. If you're just popping in, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You do have to be subscribed to win in the marble race. And if we get to 300 likes, we will do another suit show very soon. So uh, hit that thumbs up button if you haven't uh, already. Lee, as bad as that game was last night, we get repaid by the football gods because Sunday afternoon, the main event of the NFL schedule this week Bills, Chiefs at Arrowhead, and the Buffalo Bills are a slight favorite in this game. Give us your breakdown of what could be the matchup of the year in the regular season. You got Patrick Mahomes, but he's got a leaky offensive line. You got an angry Buffalo Bills pass rush that sends people from anywhere and they blitz you unmercifully. Mahomes is going to have to do magic. He's going to have to be Houdini because I think he's going to be rushing out of the pocket to try to make plays, but he historically has made those plays. I think Kansas City's offense is going to have real trouble with all the stuff that Buffalo brings off the line of scrimmage. That's item one. Uh, in terms of Josh Allen, uh, Kansas City is going to spy him. I think Kansas City is probably going to have to blitz him. I will say this, Kansas City is much more athletic now on the back seven defensively than they've been for a while. But I think Steve Spagnuolo is going to have to send people to disrupt Josh Allen. Buffalo still does not have what I'd call real legitimacy at running back. Now, granted, they throw to Devin Singletary a lot more than they used to. They do have digs. They got the tight end. I mean, they've got young receivers that are complementing Stephon Diggs. So I think Buffalo is pretty dangerous. But I think you're going to see Kansas City just gamble and gamble and gamble. And by the way, they're going to spy on Josh Allen, so he's not going to have the opportunities to run. I don't think it's going to be 45-42. I think there'll be some turnovers. I think there'll be hits on the quarterback. But 
like you say, it's going to be entertainment. Oh, it is going to be great. Leah, before we run, fill people in on uh, what's kicking at LeeHacksawHamilton.com as well as the Lee Hacksaw Hamilton YouTube channel and the podcast. Well, you know, we cover Major League Baseball down here because we have a Padre team that no longer fears the Los Angeles Dodgers yeah. after they beat the crap out of the New York Mets in the wild card series. We had a playoff game tonight in downtown San Diego at, Pet Law, at Petco Park. P- community's going crazy, but uh, the website is is also got my new podcast on it. You can uh, click the link to go to Lee Hacksaw Hamilton's podcast. You can subscribe so you get the alerts because we post stuff every day now on our podcast. And of course, the website covers this, that, and the other, whether it's NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, your NHL, NASCAR, golf, uh, English Premier Soccer League, you name it, we write about it. And like you, Hustler, we all have opinions about it. <laughs> Lee, you're the best. Have a great weekend. Enjoy all of the action. Hockey, baseball, football, it's all happening right now. And uh, we'll look forward to catching up next week. Appreciate your time as always. My pleasure, Hustler. Have a great sports weekend. Thanks again. We'll talk to you. You got it. There it is. Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. By the way, follow him on Twitter as well, at Hacksaw1090. All right, gang. Uh, we've had it opened. If you just popped up during Lee Hacksaw Hamilton, We will be doing a Friday marble race, despite the fact that we are on location. More genius from the CTO. We're just about ready to do it. So here we are. Last call for marbles. If you're just popping in, we'll give you a minute. Exclamation mark marbles. And uh, at that point, we'll uh, we'll fire it up and uh, get ready to go and finish off the show and then get ready to... See what happens tonight between the Winnipeg Jets and the New York Rangers. All right, so last call for that. Oh, and geez, by the way, we're now just 12 likes away from a suit show. Very close. <laughs> I didn't think we'd be putting the suits back on this quickly, but uh, tell you what, between Sarah and Weber and the excitement about the start of the season, it's been an amazing show. Thanks to everyone that's joined us. And uh, yes, you do have to be uh, subscribed to win our version of the Masters Green Jacket, the uh, WST hoodie, uh, courtesy of us and our great friends over at Canadian Club. Um, so if you've missed it so far, exclamation mark marbles in the chat. While you're at it, hit the thumbs up. Oh, my God, 297. This is actually going to happen, I, Remo. We're I'm going back to back. I'm going to be honest. Like, we had, like, 200 likes or something, or 190. I was like, all right, let's see if we can get to 200. 300. And then... And then everyone in chat, uh, MC Stormy, Phyllis, were like, all right, 300, it's Sh- Suit Show. And just started telling everyone in chat to hit you guys are the, the best. like button. Uh, <laughs> that's so awesome to see. And look, if you're new here, you don't understand. YouTube, when they see 300 people are hitting the like button, it tells YouTube this is a good video and it'll recommend it to more people. So it uh, helps the channel grow. We're closing in. Uh, we're closing on 8,300 subs. This is game one. We're here at Canada Life Center. Uh, I mean, we're freezing in here, but this is pretty cool. We're having a great time. What, what was what was the, the the ref said at the start of the game the other day? What's better than this? Yeah, what's <laughs> yeah the start. Three hundred likes, marble race, home opener tonight. What's better than this? Uh, I am in a great mood though, and uh, this has been fun. I definitely want to thank Krista and the gang here at the Jets for yes. accommodating us to come down here and do this, and I think it's gone so well. Certainly, everyone's enjoyed it in the chat too. Um, we'll probably try and do this again. Um, on a few more occasions so far this season. All right, last call for marbles. You know what's up. Red subscribe button, exclamation mark marbles in the chat. I'll let Remus get that set up. And Remo, don't worry about throwing the uh, the, the cool bet lines up on the screen right now because um, there's a whole bunch of things I will get to while you can get marbles ready. Um, let's start off. Well, you know what? We'll finish off with the Jets. CFL is going on. We did the lock shop earlier with Dusty today. He's going to be calling the Hamilton-Calgary game tonight, um, which will be a little later on. We'll probably be able to catch the second half after the Bomber game. But... Alouettes and Red Blacks tonight. Ottawa is still alive. If Ottawa can run the table and get some help from the Calgary Stampeders against no. Saskatchewan, Ottawa and Bobby Dyke, I would love for that to happen. Ottawa fans deserve it, to be perfectly honest with you, after what they've been through. They're at home, three and a half point underdogs today to the Alouettes. Calgary, seven point favorites at home to Hamilton. The Elks, Five and a half point home dogs to the Toronto Argonauts and the Bombers who opened up as two and a half point favorites are now three point underdogs. Not surprisingly, though, because of how many of the starters aren't playing. But I'm really looking forward to seeing Drew Brown get a chance to get out there and start. 
controlled conditions. Still some great playmakers on that club. That is tomorrow night. and We'll have a full wrap-up of the weekend for the Bombers on Monday's show on WST. Uh, the NFL lines are all up. I mean, we just talked about a few of the games with uh, with Lee and Ur, and it was certainly in the lock shop. But the Bills-Chiefs game right now, Chiefs, two-and-a-half-point home dogs, and that's plus 100 even money. This could potentially get to three, which would surprise me. But the Bills, two-and-a-half-point road favorites in Arrowhead against the Chiefs. That's a late game, 325 on Sunday. Now, as far as the Jets go, for tonight, uh, there's four games in the NHL. Lightning are minus 189 favorites in Columbus against the Blue Jackets. Sad news about Patrick Laine. Um, had a beautiful goal in game number one. And shortly after that was knocked out of the game. Um, he's going to be out three to four weeks with an upper body injury. Um, Kent Johnson, the rookie, recalled. He'll presumably get a chance to play some pretty significant minutes with their number one sniper out for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Red Wings and Habs tonight. Detroit at home. Andrew Kopp with the winged wheel on his jersey. Detroit's a favorite. They're minus 161 at home against the Montreal Canadiens, who are plus 137, coming off their season opening win in their home opener against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Late night, Hurricanes, heavy road favorite, minus 204, taking on the San Jose Sharks, who started off their season with a couple of losses to Nashville at the Czech Republic. And then we've got the Rangers and the Jets. The Jets are a minus 139 favorite against the New York what? Rangers. Rangers plus 118. Well, that number, it was I think it was minus 122 before. couple things on that. First of all, uh, we've seen the schedule that the Rangers have played. They played last night in Minnesota. It's their third game in four nights. The Jets have been sitting here preparing and waiting for them all week long. That certainly has something to do with it. And then the expected start of Yarl Halak over Shesterkin, another big factor in that. So the Jets are favored tonight to win. Now, we've got a whole bunch of, uh, of, of interesting props for the game, but let's just talk about player goals. I mentioned to Weber... Oh, we want to go with the revenge narrative. Morgan Barron, how about? Morgan Barron's plus 295. But the usual suspects, Kyle Connor, plus 136. Nikolai Ehlers, plus 160. Mark Shifley, just under 2-1. to one. I don't mind that at plus 195. And PLD is 2-1, to one, plus 200 to score. Now, one other thing that I'll let you know, if you click on the Cool Bet exclusives on the page... Uh, I kicked up a little, uh, there it is, Hustlers exclusive. So we're riding with the Jets tonight. Jets home opener special. Jets to win the game on the money line. Kyle Connor to score a goal. And we got to give some love to Connor Hellebuck. Hopefully the Rangers uh, did all their goal scoring last night in Minnesota. Rangers under three and a half goals tonight. So Jets win, Kyle Connor goal. Three goals or less for the uh, the Rangers. We got that at plus 235. Some other exclusives there if you want to check it out. But that is on the left side of the margin at CoolBet.com if you want to get it. If you've never played a CoolBet before, use the promo code WST. We'll hook you up with a 100% bonus on your first deposit over at CoolBet.com. All right. Um, hey, I got to give a big shout out to our friends at Little Brown Jug, by the way. The weekend is here. And... Uh, Nothing makes the uh, hockey watching if you're doing it from the home theater or back at home with the fellas. Uh, grab a couple cases, a little brown jug. You can do it down at the uh, brewery and tap room, not far from where we are right now in downtown Winnipeg over on William Avenue. Uh, of course, little brown jug available throughout the city at beer stores all around. And if you're picking a good spot, they'll have 1919 on tap at fine bars and restaurants before or after the game. Of course, little brown jug does have citywide delivery. Go to littlebrownjug.ca. You can check out all the great beers, some phenomenal merchandise as well, and uh, make your order straight up online, and you won't even have to leave the house. You'll get the Little Brown Jug delivered directly to you. Big thanks to Little Brown Jug on William Avenue for their support of WST. All right, Michael Remus, I do believe it is just about marbles time, and then we can get out of here pack up and then get back here for a big, big game tonight to kick off the Winnipeg Jets season. Now, 
How uh, how are we with the uh, with the list? This is great. I actually get to see what happens behind the scenes right now when the marbles all come together. Okay, we have about 204 entries Whoa. here into the marble race. Whoa. And I do want to give a shout to a couple people getting memberships. Carl and Rob, thank you. Thanks, uh, guys. Joining the supporters group. Shout out to uh, a couple super chats. T Kona Polly had a huge one, actually. Uh, when you were doing the ad, he's like, T Kona Polly? T Kona Polly. It was a big message. So shout out to Polly. T Will. Uh, really, a lot of people in chat has <laughs> upset about Hacksaw saying he's a Leafs fan. Uh, let's, so was I. So yeah, was I. I mean, people... I called him out right there. Jeff Kabilis had my favorite chat. He's like, Hacksaw's heel turn. Man. This is bigger than Hogan going to the NWO. People what are is up. <laughs> people are really, really having trouble. And, you know, Figuring it out. They're hacks of watching every week. Leafs fan? Is it possible? <laughs> uh, people are triggered. Uh, so. All right. Well, uh, let's get the, um, let's get, you know, can we, do we still have yeah. time to add a couple yeah, guys Yeah, yeah, I can add. I haven't done. So are we going to add Sarah? We'll add Sarah. Sarah's in. Yeah. Uh, Ken's in. Yeah. Uh, Hacksaw's heel turn is yeah. in. Okay. Um, let's give one to, uh, Axel, Axel F, the newest member of the okay, Winnipeg Axel Jets. Axel F, Axel Janssen, I think, Yelby. I think we need to give one to Bones for okay. his, you know, his first regular season game back here. And, uh, and you know what? Let's give one to Connor Hellebuck tonight. Got a good feeling about Connor and God knows we're going to need him this year if this team's going to get back to the playoffs. So Connor gets one as well. Oh, okay. uh, you know what? We should give one to Saku Menelainen as well. <laughs> Saku, Saku, hey, he's made the team. He's making his return. And you know what? Sam Gagne, new jet as well. <laughs> Sam Gagne gets a marvel. Sure. Sam Gagne I'll, gets a marvel as well. I'll throw one more in. I want to give a shout out to uh, Colin, who uh, hooked us up with this great lighting. This oh. show would not look uh, near anywhere near as good. So thank you to Colin uh, for hooking Our guy us up Colin, there. a huge, huge solid uh, to us here. Yeah. He's a longtime buddy of ours, but. Uh, yeah, he came up and uh, helped us out mm -hmm. big time. So we got to take these things down and put them back. That's another reason why we got to get yeah, going we need on to this go. I got to do the podcast. We got to take this down, bring the car around, uh, take all my stuff home. Not, I don't want to leave it in the car. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then we'll get changed. So let me put this. I got a marble race, October 14. There we go. I can't believe it's October 14. I, I can't either, but I also kind of can't believe it took this long for us to get a game for the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> but here we are right now. Uh, and don't forget tomorrow, folks, Moose Home Opener, 2 p.m. And if you haven't already, the Fink was with us. Daniel Fink, voice of the Manitoba Moose, earlier this week and did say if you wanted to slide into the Fink's DMs, uh, he's got a promo code for a $15 ticket for the game tomorrow. Re Actually, we're both going to be at the game tomorrow I'm afternoon. Taking my son there to his first Jets game or first uh, hockey game. Whoa, Bart Omen with a uh, huge super chat. Bart. Thanks, Bart. Thank you very much. Buy yourself a couple beers yeah. each tonight. Hey, wow. Bart, thank you very much. So That's actually a good thing. That is very neat. By the way, folks, if you are coming to the game, get here early. Because six dollar beers uh, before the game, right up until the end of warm up, and listen, I think that's always a great way to get people into the building beforehand. It's also great to get a couple in people and maybe get things going in the first period, crowd wise uh, as well. So take advantage of that. And Bart, thank you very much. We will certainly do exactly that. Um, all right, well let's uh, yeah. let's get going. We got marbles to drop here. It's just past three p.m. Promised them we'd be done right around this time. Yeah, we got to get going. Um, so, uh, so where are we gonna go to go today, Reem? Well, before we go here. We oh, of course. Hello, Tristan Rivers music in opening day version of the Marbles theme on WST. There. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Yeah, blew my ears off. <laughs> I think some people in the there. chat too. That was a uh, we maybe had the levels a little high, yeah. but hey, it's rock, rock and roll from Tristan. Oh wait, should no one... be played loud. Oh, I, I didn't have the sound on for that. Do we have to do it again? Oh no, Excuse I didn't. Excuse have... me, what? I didn't sound have... is it two ten? Oh, I didn't have the sound because it almost blew my oh, it... head right off. Oh, it blew. Yeah, that was not crazy. <laughs> so they couldn't hear it. The theme song. <laughs> Uh, well, that's that's an L for us if that's the case. Yeah. But um, it was so we loud. Gotta for get me. this done. It would have blown your speakers right off yeah. the way. So uh, it's probably few good. gremlins on the remote side of things. I know you guys will give us a yellow card, not a red card for this. All right, let's get to it, folks. Thanks again to everyone that's uh, put a marble in in the race. Again, we've got a Winnipeg Sports Talk Canadian Club, a hoodie. Um, we are getting a few more in, hopefully next week. So I know Rob, we owe you one, and. Um, going to do something for Dark Moon as well. So uh, hopefully in the next week or so, just to hit me up and uh, we will get you as oh. soon as those come in. Uh, what are we thinking tonight? Should we just do a quick one real quick here? Oh, it's Space Chase. The Space Chase? I don't know, but I'm here for it. I'll do Space Chase. Okay, let's do 212 marbles total. 212. One of our, uh, well, this is right there with the biggest marble race ever, actually. Usually we're sort of 160, 170. Uh, but uh, got to be okay. So space chase here it is. Everyone is in home opening weekend here for both the Jets and the Moose. Thanks to everyone for joining us on this special live show. Shout out to Sarah for popping on. She's in the marble race. So are all of you. There's only one thing to do, folks, before we get ready for this game, and that's drop the marbles on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Let's go, Remus. And they're in the funnel. Here we are going into the funnel, the space chase today. Uh, oh, Connor Hellebuck. Connor Hellebuck and Mike Wynn going at it. Um, oh, this is the one good thing is I can see who's ahead a lot better. Ooh, Hacksaw's heel turn had a nice start. Atomic Kong, Jason Jett, a, a WST DraftKings legend, by the way. Is there an NFL contest open? There is an NFL DraftKings contest in our group if you okay. want to join. I uh, haven't done that yet, but I will very soon. Big Apple Hockey. Shout out to Big Apple Hockey. That's a Rangers fan jumping in for the game tonight. And oh. I saw Big Apple uh, saying that he was uh, helping the crew get to 300 likes. So uh, we appreciate that. Wouldn't that be, speaking of heel turns and move, Big Apple Hockey rolling into the Winnipeg Sports Talk chat on opening night. <laughs> And winning the marble race. Uh, there are some major eliminations on? right now. People are getting thrown over the top rope. There goes Tico Napoli, Free Oleg, Isha Boy Bruce. Who will survive? Stefan Marshall, it looks like, is sort of the uh, the clubhouse leader right now. Jason Jett's in a good spot on the other side. Oh, this is all going to come down to this final obstacle. Who can get through? Is it going to be Pie Boy? Oh, I think Pie Boy got it. Pie Boy's in perfect maneuvering in the front, and Pie Boy is our winner. Peppermint Patty with a strong performance, finishing second. Ron P, Luke 799, Evan Hunter in fifth. The rest of the top 10, Leanne M, Redwood, Larry Eloy, Sam Gagne? <laughs> Sam, Sam what what's his goal prop tonight? If he's <laughs> if he's top ten, if he's top ten in the Marble race, he's got some good karma going into it. Oh. Uh, there it is. There it is. The, the horn goes for the Marble race. That's it, everybody. <laughs> All right. Pie Boy, send us an email, Winnipeg Sports Talk at gmail.com. We will get you set up. I'll contact you and we'll uh, uh, hook up a uh, time for you to come by and pick up the prize. And uh that is just about going to do it for us. I see Bardo coming across the uh, across the way. Kevin's taking his sweet time to get through. And uh, obviously, a ton of people ended up getting eliminated as well. Um, Remo, just on our way out, if you can, let's just do a quick scan oh. of the final results. Just go to the bottom. People can go back to the YouTube channel to see it. We won't need to read everybody out. Uh, but just... Uh, for Ross and Sean, who have yeah. their head-to-head -head bet every week, we can see who's who's in and who's out. Um, 
But there you go, folks. Again, big thanks to uh, everyone here, Krista and the staff that helped us out make this happen today. Colin saving the day with the uh, awesome lighting that made the show much, much better. And uh, I guess there's only one thing to do for us. Let's uh, get out of here. Maybe crack in 1919 before the game. Head on down here and see if the Jets can start off on a winning note tonight against the New York Rangers. Big thanks to Sarah Orleski, as well as Chris, as I mentioned, the Jets staff. Ken Weeb, as always, love Ken's visits. And the one and only Lee Hacksaw Hamilton. Thanks to all of our sponsors. And most of all, thanks to you. Huge show. We're doing another suit show, apparently, because we're over 300 likes. We love to do that. And, uh, folks, have a great, great night. Uh, if you see me at the game, say hi. And, everyone, I'll be at the Moose game tomorrow as well, so maybe we'll bump into you there. If not, we'll see you 1 p.m. on Monday afternoon with a full weekend recap, and we'll get ready for another Winnipeg Jets game day as the team plays game number two and their first game on the road. For Michael Remus, I'm Andrew Patterson. Enjoy the game tonight. Have an awesome weekend. Good luck to the Jets and Moose this season, and we'll see you Monday on WST. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.